your seatbelt is going to be a bump you walk. Chrissy is hilarious. Chrissy, have you ever heard of the comedian Basha K. Ali? No, that sounds like something you yell at before you blow up a plane. <laughs> 30 seconds remaining. Like, you know, what could you say? I doubt it will stand up to something. I have any disrespect for you at all. I was very confused by the title, Everything Everywhere All at Once, because that's also what we call it when the ass takes off his shirt. (laughs) 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 I shouldn't be up here. I should be in school on the other side of the ocean. Oh, what's up, everybody? Welcome to my live stream. Hello. Happy Friday. I hope everybody had a really good week. Yes, I just came from Friday Night Tights. Hope you guys were watching. Big shout out and congrats, by the way, to my buddies, Razor Fist and G Prime, a.k.a. George Alexopoulos. Uh, This is unreal. Like Shad joked on FNT that they would hit 100K tonight. And we were all like, okay, calm down. <laughs> and look, they're up to $96,625. This is something they only <laughs> put on tonight. This Indiegogo was started tonight, like right as FNT was starting. They hit their 50K goal like that just in a couple of hours. And this is unbelievable. Like these guys are, are probably going to hit 100K. Uh, certainly by tomorrow night, unless this, you know, tonight, unless it really drops off, but this is incredible. I'm really excited. Uh, I ordered the, uh, the super package, uh, that will include a hard cover and a soft cover and a, I want my autographed poster guys. I'm very excited about that, but this is basically, it looks like a very cool Western themed comic. Uh, like George has a big kind of like I guess more of an anime background with his uh, illustrations and Razor Fist is just a great author. Uh, He wrote, let's see, he's also written two pulp novels called Death Mask and The Long Moonlight. And George is the illustrator. He's an award-winning cartoonist who has self-published over a dozen indie comics and draws satirical cartoons under the name G Prime 85. George has been on the show. I've interviewed him and I first became aware of him because he was submitting a lot of work to Tim cast. And I don't know if you remember probably around like 2020, 2021, Tim was featuring like some of his cartoons in the background. And I was like, wow, he's got a really amazing uh, noticeable style. So I'm just so proud of these dudes. Uh, I supported them right away. Cause I'm like, you know what, we're all part of the same team. Uh, I support anybody who is creating something outside, you know, mainstream paths. So this is very cool. I'm excited. Congrats dudes. Yes. Yes. We're going to get to the Steven Crowder details. Um, Dave Landau was on Michael Malice's You're Welcome recently. Wow, a day ago. Just a day ago. And this stream of theirs already got up to 99K views. And it really caught my eye. And I haven't listened. I haven't finished listening to the whole thing. I listened to a chunk where Dave was talking about, you know, getting out of his situation at Louder with Crowder. And it, it really interests me. And I was like, you know what? Let me go through it again with you guys. We can go through it together because this really interests me kind of as a comedian, as a podcaster as well. Uh, I first came to know Dave Landau in 2018 when I first started going on Compound Media. Uh, He was with, I think he was already with Kumia at the time. Yeah, he definitely started there before I did. And I was starting to go on just do like bit parts on In Hot Water which was at the time Aaron Berg and Gino Bisconti show. Now it's just Gino hosting it. And I was going on like here and there. Uh, and then I started to become a more regular guest. So I've basically known like Landau since like 2018, basically. And I think he left compound media. I think it was 2021. So like two years ago. 
Um, he left to go join Ladder with Crowder. Because I understand Kumi is moving to South Carolina. He probably thought, oh, how much longer can I do this? It, you know, I'm sure they gave him a good deal. So it made sense uh, for why he went. I don't know if, you know, not everybody can leave on the best terms, but like, it is what it is. You know, he left. He left for Crowder. But he's such a hilarious comedian. Uh, we've done some gigs together. You know, we've had a couple of comedians of the compound shows that we were all, you know, we were all on together. And L Dave Lando is like one of the funniest stand up comics I've ever seen. I just think he's super talented. I think he's a super nice guy. I think he deserves all the success in the world. And I'm just particularly it's it's funny that this is coming off the heels of recently, you know, Crowder's whole drama with the Daily Wire and, ex you know, kind of exposing what he thought was a terrible contract um, with the Daily Wire or like, uh, I mean, that seems like, I mean, there was a lot, there was a lot of mess there. There was recording of phone calls. So I think, I mean, from what I've heard, I think uh, uh, quite a few people ha have said that Crowder has a little bit of a reputation Maybe he's hard to work with. I don't know. But it was interesting to listen to Dave on Michael Malice's show. And just, you know, he was like, I didn't sign an NDA. So it was interesting to hear him open up. And I just had no idea what he was dealing with, what he was going through. Because, like, over the last couple of years, like, I've kept in touch with Dave. I'm like, hey, come to my podcast, like, every once in a while. Come, let's chat, like, promote whatever you're doing. Let's talk about what you're up to. And he was, you know. He's been busy. He had, I think he had a family member that was sick. Um, so he's he's just had a lot going on. But I just had no idea that he was going on. He was dealing with so much uh, with the Ladder with Crowder show. So, yeah. And that's a good point, buddy. Kumia has constantly said that he's not interested in a permanent co-host. And I think Dave was just a good um, temporary co-host. Because I feel like Kumi, when did Kumi decide to move to South Carolina? It had to have been 2021, maybe end of 2020. But that's yeah, been, 22. yeah, that's been in the works for a minute. So, and Dave's got a family to support. So he's got more than just himself to think of. Like he's, he's not like most comics who just live with five roommates in Brooklyn and eat ramen and they can kind of scrap for a while. He had to do what was best for him. Uh, 200 Watt Studio, thanks for the super chat. Chrissy, you're awesome. Amber Heard 2.0 was totally wrong to do that to you on your stream. Oh, are you talking about like the the Brittany Alex drama? Yeah, we can definitely get to that after. We can definitely get, you know, cover that a little more after this. But I like Brittany. I, I don't think she realized what happened. Um, oh, Ghost Crusaders. Hello, Ghost Crusaders. Fasten your seatbelts is going to be a bumpy ride. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Um, okay, let's see. You know what I need? I need to get two screens going. I think that's really going to bring me into the next level. Oh, Chippicus. All right, I didn't see your super chat because I can see some of them on my phone that I can't necessarily see on the screen chipicus working with crowder equal to walking on greg shells question mark see yeah that is what we're going to find out it kind of sounds that way but you know i feel like crowder doesn't really need anybody if he he can he can do everything he wants completely by himself he has the resources he absolutely has the fan base so oh i left the jack show because i was tired let's see let's see where's that um where I forget where that comment went, but I was tired. I had been on way longer than I had planned to, and I was going to try to wake up early for the gym. So, yeah, but I did a Jack show last night after my stream with Brittany and Alex. So it was a it was a long night. It was a late ass night. OK, let's bring up my shows. I'm so excited. It's next week already. On Wednesday. Six o'clock. Uh, I'm not sure actually if it's <laughs> but uh, that'll be going on for a few hours. I'm so excited to meet those of you that I haven't yet. And then I'm highlighting <laughs> Atlantic the next day in 
Vegas. This venue is called The Space. It is like, I think it's right off the strip, but it's pretty centrally located. That'll be at 7 o'clock. Lila, I'm flying out with Keanu Johnson. We are going to be travel buddies. We'll be meeting Lila Hart out there. Show together. Let me pull up the seating chart for The Space because. Your mic keeps cutting out when I. My mic is cutting out? When I'm playing music. Maybe you're playing it too loud? No, it's all the way at the bottom. The bottom of what? Volume. Huh. That's weird. It's very weird. Maybe it's just... Boom! Get your tickets, guys. You're, you know, if you're worried about being roasted, look, these blue seats are available. This is well out of the roasting range. I'm probably not even going to see you back here. So go ahead, get your tickets. I wonder what's the difference between the purple seats and the blue seats. I guess you're uh, on this thing called a porch. <laughs> Uh, get your tickets for Vegas. This is next Thursday, April 27th at The Space. You can go to thespacelv.com or straight to my website. Um, but yeah, excited to see you guys. This is going to be really fun. Me, Keanu Thompson, Lila Hart. Check us out. All And you're, if you're hearing this and going, man, that sounds like a lot of women. I don't know if I'm going to like that, Chrissy. I don't know if that's going to be. At all of us, we have very male sense of humors. It's going to be great. Then I'm heading to Texas. I'm going to do a couple appearances in Austin, uh, Drinking Bros, Infowars. Then I'm driving back to Dallas. Going to be on the Blaze for a couple of days uh, with Alex on his show, Prime Time 99. Then I'm doing Hyenas. Uh, I'll be headlining May 5th and 6th. Two shows Friday, two shows Saturday. Lila Hart will be there as well. And Keanu Thompson and Alex will be coming by to do spots as well because he in the hood. So if you're in Texas, I better see you at these hyenas shows. It's a great club. I really love performing there. Then I'll be at Richmond, Virginia, Sandman Comedy Club on August 9th. Then we got Anime Matsuri. My first time going to Anime Matsuri in Houston. That's August 10th through the 13th. George R. Brown Convention Center. Mm -mm. <laughs> I don't know why I said it like that. Then I'm headlining in Houston that Friday, August 11th at The Secret Group. Nice and early show, 7 o'clock. Get your tickets now if you know you're going to be at Anime that weekend. Uh, go to my website, chrissymayer.com. Get your tickets. Come and hang. Simcast will also have a panel and a booth at Anime Matsuri. Yeah, I got my hair did. Thank you, NKFD. That's really mostly the reason for this live stream is to, you know, really just show everyone my hair. This is what it's capable of when it is washed and um, dyed and fresh. We, I don't have gray, gray hair. If I did, <laughs> y'all would have heard it by now. I'm pretty honest. So, but thank you. I appreciate the neg. Richard Simmons, wasn't Dave supposed to come on your stream recently and canceled a couple of different times? Would love to see him on here. Me too. Yeah. And I think, I honestly think that speaks to just the amount of shit he had going on uh, personally and professionally. Um, hey, Christian, I didn't know who Landau was until Crowder. Same as I didn't know who you were until Schaefer. Yeah, and that's what's good about the Blaze. It, uh, you can be introduced to a lot of different talent. And like kind of vice versa. There's some people who didn't hear me till Friday Night Tights. There's some people who didn't hear me till Compound Media. So and I think that's great. And then there's some people who haven't heard of the guests that I've had on until they came on my show. So it's all good. All right. Okay, let's fire this up. I'm going to start it from the place in the show where Dave is talking about, um, I think this is when Crowder broached the subject of wanting to film Dave's uh, comedy special. And I think I'll play this at normal speed because it probably sounds weird to listen to it fast. Okay. And uh, what kind of I want, like I'm sorry, episode? he didn't. I wanted to. I'm you sorry. Want to okay. yeah. Stand-up comedy. So yeah. I had decided I was going to buy the equipment and film the special in Dallas. Uh, and we were selling out this theater. And he decided he wanted to get back into stand-up, which he had done when he was younger. Okay. And he had just been a host since then. Uh, so he said, hey, if I can I jump on and open it and I'll help promote it. You can help me maybe write some of my, my stuff, get me back into it and I'll help promote it. And I said, sure, of course. 
So we ended up selling out two shows, obviously, instead of just one because he was yeah. helping promote it and he's a draw. So we went there and Matt McClowry was the opener. I know, Matt. He's been on this show as well. People can look back. Yep. Oh, autistic, and Literally autistic comedian, Matt McClowry. <laughs> Very literally autistic. Yes. Yep. Uh, yeah. The real deal. The real, the real kind of shooter. <laughs> and he's can, fans can, too. Can, yes, you didn't know. <laughs> Dude, he's really passing as a freak. <laughs> yeah, he does a great job. Born yeah. a lady, but totally. Um, I'm sure most of you are familiar with Michael Malice, but I came to know Michael. Same thing. As soon as I joined Compound in 2018, uh, he was hosting a show on Compound called Nightshade, right? I think it was called Nightshade. I even hosted it for him once and I called it Nightmare, which is funnily enough. I hate when people say funnily enough, but I don't have another different phrase. It's how I got the uh, <laughs> the idea to call my hot sauce Nightmare. Uh, it was from that sweet little pun. But yeah, I adore Michael Mouse. I think he's one of the smartest people creating content on the internet. Like funny, smart, just has a really good sense of what's going on. And uh definitely more white pilled. I mean, his latest book is literally called the white pill. So I appreciate his takes. Um, okay. But I'm sure you guys all know who he is. Total candlelight vigil. And, uh, yeah, he, he, uh, went up and got a standing ovation after Steven and Steven kind of saw we were friends. And after that, uh, I, you know, pulled Steven aside and Steven couldn't do the Monday show. And I said, could Matt come in and, and, co-host with me he said yeah so now it's super bowl sunday the whole special went great. oh i guess was this like meaning like co-host uh ladder with crowder do you know if that's what he was saying frank what do you know if that's what he was saying that that he was going to have mcclary come in and host ladder with crowder with him like co-host with him i don't know if it's about that or a comedy show okay that's all right. Great. It's not important. Um, I paid everybody to film it except for uh, one other person. Okay, it was Larry there Crowder. to film Stephen's set. And I was very looking forward to the special coming out. And Monday had, uh, or Sunday had rolled around, and I get a call from the showrunner that said Matt's not allowed to do the show. How did they tell you? Like, literally, what they say? He's uh, such a good yeah. interviewer, Mouse. He's like, literally, he's not even letting him move on until he clarifies the points that are exactly the points that the audience wants to hear text. It was just, um, Matt's not allowed, uh, Matt can, uh, it's been like decided something like that, Matt, I can find the text, but, but the word is allowed. It's not like we don't have time or won't fit the schedule. The word was Correct. allowed Matt's not or allowed permitted or something like that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. To do the show on Monday. Is and there I, any, was there any explanation at all? No. Okay. So I said, that's odd. I already asked Steven and he said it was okay. Yeah. You know, and they said, oh, that's weird. I must have gotten mixed messages. So I just text Steven and said, hey, I, I just talked to the showrunner. Um, I just want to make sure it's still cool that Matt comes in. And he texts me something back along the lines of what's done is done. Uh, oh. What? <laughs> like, I have never known a situation where another comedian like this this whole show was dave's idea obviously crowder's the bigger name uh probably also the bigger draw i mean but this is their show together he already was on the night before killed standing ovation killed there would be like if a comic wants somebody on the show like that that should be that should be not a big deal but to have him suddenly cut the next night is extremely suspect. Like it'd be one thing if, oh my God, you know, handle the heckler really bad or drop the end bomb for 10 straight minutes. Like uh, unless you bomb, this is so highly irregular and uh, this really just never happens. Like usually it's like, it's his show. He should be able to have on whoever he wants. Oh, and I said, what, it, what does that mean? It's your show. Wait, but wait, yes. maybe, he, maybe he had a light. And when the light went on, decision making ceases. See, you have the yellow light. He's got the red light in his house. There's, it's, it's lights all the way up. It's true. He maybe when I asked him, he was seeing a green light. Yes, you idiot. Uh, yeah, I, I know. I, this I, is how I show show business, show business works. It's this. Yeah. What's what? It is the business of show, and yes. I am not paying attention to the. How lights. are you going to show things without lights? You're going to yes. show them in the dark. That makes no sense. It, very little sense. 
Yes. And, you know, Unless really, it's a movie, I guess. I guess that's how we think of the dark. Well, I guess this is why I'm sitting here in my demon chair instead of in a nice yes. studio. <laughs> it's, fine. it's fine. I'm learning out my background so nobody knows what this uh, this hellish life is. This, this, this uh, opium den. Hmm. Yeah, it really is. This There's, is so uh, interesting. And like this kind of reminds me of a similar so, – because I'm seeing you guys in the chat. You're saying Crowder is definitely the bigger name, but Landau is the bigger name in comedy. It seems like Crowder was very much out of the loop comedy wise and is they're helping each other right I, I feel like part of dave why dave joined ladder with crowder was for the exposure it's a huge opportunity and then but then i think you know crowder looks at dave and goes okay well that is a huge opportunity to get back into stand up and he even said like help write some of my jokes didn't he didn't he say like help me with some of my material and it's so interesting because i had a similar experience with um with Tim Young, who is uh, more of a political personality, like cultural commentator. I, he had done my show and then I met him in person on January 6th and we like really hit it off and we got along. We're like, Oh, it's great. And he's like, Oh, we need to start. We need to start touring together. We need to start like going on the road together. And I was like, Oh wow, this is exciting. Cause at the time I was like, wow, Tim Young has so many Twitter followers and I think he's hilarious. And I didn't realize how little he was doing stand up, but I, at, the, at the time I didn't care. I was like, yeah, like I always love going on the road with people and the kind of like the more the merrier if, if we're especially like a similar brand. And we had booked all of these gigs. We're going to do this tour together. I forget the name. Good. Some sort of like America or free speech themed, like whatever. Uh, so many people are, are calling their tours along those lines, but I can see the similarities between like, okay, I was excited to tour with him because he was the bigger name with the bigger following, but he, he was interested. I mean, it was his idea. Uh, he was interested in working with me for my connections with comedy clubs for, you know, producing these shows, you know, putting this tour together. And then I was like, Hey Tim, we need to start promoting these shows. Like we need to start moving some tickets. Like that's part of stand up is literally promoting your shows. And he was like, what? We're, they're not selling. They're not selling just off my name. That's it. I'm out. And then like, he kind of fucked me. Like <laughs> some of the gigs I was able to still do on my own, but I, you know, some of them, the clubs pulled out and was like, well, this isn't the show you promised us. You, you kind of promised us both of you and uh, lost kind of burned bridges with a couple of clubs because of that whole situation. But some of the shows I was able to do by myself and it worked out fine and it was great. Um, so I guess, yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting similarity there. Uh, it's there's sadness behind me. I've <laughs> asked everybody, everybody around you and inside you. There's Wait, a lot okay, of so mothers was... going to hell behind me. So he just says, what's done is done. Yeah, and I said, what does that mean? It's your show, which is ironic. That's what he yeah. said. And my phone rings. And, you know, I, I don't want to go greatly into the conversation between us, but it was, it, he's like, do you, wanna, do you still want to be on Hot with Crowder? And I said, not at the moment. Ooh. And uh, I wonder where he was, where this conversation happened, because he said, oh, it was loud. Like he was being loud on the phone. People could hear he him. starts going off on I guess this, this sounds like it might have been as soon as he gave him the news that Matt could not be on the show that next night. Damn, which is a heavy conversation to have right before a big show. Me, and now there's a ton of people in my apartment who can hear it. Wait, like, he's literally raising his voice? He's screaming at me. Okay, so literally raising his voice, not just being stern, like to the point where people, it's audible. Oh, uh, uh, it's audible, yeah. Yes, okay. Yeah, it's, it's uh, started stern, but then it got into telling me that he owns me. and, and in those words, Oof. Yes. Wow. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Wild. Yeah, yeah. And once no, you say it must have been that's wild. Like I've never had a real manager or agent, but I can't even imagine a manager or an agent, like even a high powered Hollywood. <laughs> well, maybe they would actually, maybe that kind of is how they talk, but I just can't imagine somebody who is more on a peer level who you're doing tours with saying something like, I own you. That's so that's crazy to me. And on clearance. I mean, no one I, I was on sale, baby. Neither of us can even reach the top shelf, let alone no, sit on it. No, no, it's it's it. yikes. What a horrible thing to, to say, especially when like Dave is the one with more comedy chops, like more stand up chops. Like Crowder literally needed Dave to start getting back into doing stand up again. 
I mean, I'm sure he could have done shows on his own, but it was much easier for him to join up with Dave. (laughs) I was in a basket with a bunch of balls. He, he, uh, (laughs) I was in a looted Walmart. (laughs) Yeah. He, uh, it, it was just, it was, it was venomous and, I don't know what he was going through at that point. And I just was like, dude, I, this is, it was all this projection coming at me. Wait, let's slow down. Let's slow down because you're a comic, right? Yes. So I'm obviously not a comedian, but there have been many moments in my life when things are so surreal Mm -hmm. that I could, even if they're disturbing to experience on some level, I could be like, this is hilarious, not hilarious, but like, yeah, no, hilarious. Like this is just in the, in, in the terms of absurdity. Like if yes. I'm, if someone is sitting there screaming at me, I own you. Uh, it's just like, I it, like, like, how do you not laugh? There's, there's no Venn diagram in my background between that and reality. Other than that brief period when I was a slave in Libya, but we don't talk about that as much anymore. Right. He's changing his background. I wonder if he is, no, he probably has something that every few minutes it changes the background because it makes sense. He's promoting. He has written multiple books. I'm sure. Because of, after the Obama administration. So I was once a slave. I made mugs for a talk show. Go on. What? What? <laughs> what? What? Um, is was this the first time he had yelled at you? In in the in He's that way, yes, really good where question. it had come yeah. out where I saw a different person that I had heard rumors about. Heard rumors. About. Um, had Anthony Cumia ever yelled at you like that? Oh no, or no, no. Okay, no, no. Anthony and I never even looked at each other in a bad way. Okay, so I- Anthony is the chillest, literally like <laughs> the easiest person to ever work for, and the coolest, best guy to also be friends with. The best hang, like anyone who gets fired from Combat Media, it's like okay, that then you fucked up because he's the easiest person to to work for. I mean, Even when I left the show, we I've never said a bad word about him, and likewise. I mean, I yelled at you, but that was just for my own. I didn't say I owned you. I said, I don't want you. It's not the same. <laughs> no, no. I said, I disown you. I was trying to <laughs> hug you at the time, and I guess it wasn't the right situation. Well, we were on a precipice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I it hurt, but I feel like it was half my fault. <laughs> Good, you've learned. <laughs> the, the gaslighting worked. It's your fault. Yeah, I've I've always learned that. Ever since mother taught me as a boy, it's mostly my fault. <laughs> this is why mommy and daddy can't live together. It's because you're too dumb and ugly. <laughs> right. And neither of us wants you. Listen, we're leaving, but it's just because of you. <laughs> yeah, we yes, still love we, each other very much. Do you see the pictures before you, how we're what together? Joking. Well, you I wonder see... if like, <laughs> the joking about it so much is helping to deal with the pain and like yeah like dave is not openly like bitching but he he's definitely he's definitely spilling some tea he's definitely being honest about his treatment like more more than i expected i mean like he's really giving us an inside look at all this and i wonder if just making fun of it is helping deal with like just how bad of a situation he was in (laughs) you see how the ones with you (laughs) what so but I mean, you must. So here's let me just let's just live in this moment for a bit because it's just very jarring yeah. to me. Right. So you already kind of ticked that a your buddy, Matt, who had a good audience reaction that Stephen was privy to. Yes. Um, Stephen had said, hey, have him on the show um, to your face that he's allowed on. So that and then just to be kind of for Matt to be dismissed summarily, he's got to suck. Did you have the opportunity mm-hmm. to even tell Matt he's pulled before this whole interaction happened? No, uh, but Matt was very well. One Matt could hear, and also oh, Matt, Matt was there. Yeah, Matt was in the room. Yeah. Oh, Matt, and okay. and also, he's you know he's very intelligent. He read the situation immediately and kind of sure. could mm-hmm. read it the night before because Matt did very well. And, and but could, here's the other thing. Uh, so, so if he was already getting the sense that he wasn't liked the night before, either Crowder never wanted him to do a guest spot or he didn't like how well he did after the first night and then started putting out shitty vibes, which is so bad. Like that makes you look so bad. Like, uh, especially when you're not the most seasoned stand up going into this, it's just like, you're Steven fucking crowd or you have no reason to be insecure. Nobody is expecting you to be as good of a stand up as Dave, just like 
he is stronger in areas where Dave is not. And that should be fine. It's just, ugh, it's just so icky to have your insecurity come out that way. Sorry to interrupt you. Matt isn't like, Hey, I got this buddy back in, in um, Detroit. He should be your show. Steven saw firsthand that Matt is a professional comedian and responded well to Steven's same audience. So this isn't like some hearsay thing. I got this great buddy. He's we, we went to high school together. You should have him on. No, he got a, a standing ovation as an opener in okay. two shows in front of him. Okay. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. So as he's yelling, like what is going through your head? The only thing bothered me just. Matt is Matt McClowry, who is a comic that they're talking about was opening for them on this, uh, I guess at the special taping because I don't like being talked to like that. Yeah, who does, at all. Right? Um, yeah. But it was comical in a lot of yeah. ways because it's just I understand that there's going to be a touch of narcissism to anybody who's sort of in that field. I get it. Yeah, but you're going humorous. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, it was it was so over the top that I was trying not to laugh. And then he said Matt couldn't do his closing bit, which was killer because it was too dirty. And I and you've seen. Wait, Matt, wait, wait, Matt. hold on, hold on. The, he couldn't do the closing bit on stage. If we were going to tour together in the future, Matt couldn't do his 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 closing bit on stage. Somehow That's that wild. comes up, so you could tell so there was this projection of how he was angry of how well that bit did. Wait, wait. Okay, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I need to linger on this for a moment because this is kind of surprising to me. He told you. To tell your friend who you don't own yes. that if he's going to tour with you, there is a joke that is the closing joke. You close on the strong joke. You don't close on, you know, whatever, like any of your material. Um, yes. And he, you, you let him know he can't end on. This is so strange because when I was a newer comic, I was told that it is good practice to, when I was would be opening or hosting, like... <clears throat> I was told it's good to ask the headliner, hey, are there any subjects or topics that I should not go into? Um, sometimes the headliner, I don't know, they might know your jokes really well and be like, hey, don't do your joke about waxing. Because I, I personally have like a 10, 15 minute bit about about like the whole process of getting waxed, whatever. It's like an older bit. But I would actually never, if I heard an opener or a host talking about the subject, I would never tell them not to. I would actually piggyback off that point. I'd be like, oh, you heard your host or, oh, you heard the last comic mention this topic. I have an experience with that too. I would use that to go into my, my set. But it's not, uh, I mean, I can't think of an example, but it has happened where a headliner will restrict a comedian from doing a certain subject or a topic that they ha very closely have have bits about because I guess maybe they don't want to overdo it or make it sound like they are talking about something similar or the audience to be like, oh, didn't we just hear somebody uh, talk about that? I guess, I guess some people are worried about jokes sounding too similar. I personally have never told someone that they can't do a topic or a subject but some headliners don't want their openers to do crowd work is another thing too um which i think is strange some people really like to do all their own crowd work i personally like to have the host and the feature do a little that way i'm i'm just it's it's more to work with it's more digging that i don't really have to do but it's very odd i've never heard somebody say don't do your closing bit and it's just like they're saying your your opener and your closer should be like two of your strongest jokes so it's not like it it's so easy to oh i'll just do some other joke it's like no you do your closer cuz that is your best joke you always want to end with the best thing so it's not always so easy to just make a joke less dirty or just oh just pick a new joke clearly they're doing they're finishing with that joke because it's a huge audience and they want to do really well and they've thought about it for a while. So what he's asking here is, is ridiculous and unreasonable for sure. On the closer that kills that gets standing ovations. That's the truest to him about being a high school wrestler. But, but <laughs> so he can't, but it's not like this, but I'm reading the joke. It's not like this joke is uh, um, a Nazi joke, you know, uh, endorsing, you know, lynching or endorsing like something of horrifically offensive. Oh no, 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 that's right. more. Stevens, but, but I'm uh, clarifying for the audience, mm. it's like it's not like he's saying, "Hey, you know, if I'm touring with this guy, this joke makes it look like I'm, you know, kind of a, a, a I endorse slavery or something crazy like that." That's not what he's saying. Not at all. The yeah, joke the, is actually, if I be specific, Sorry, it's Matt. about 
No, no, no. It, it, it's it's honestly just a joke about how uh, when he played, you know, football or, or when he pl- he was a high school wrestler, it's he would come out to the song "A Whole Lot of Love." That was their song before they would mount boys on all fours, and it was like, <laughs> you know, essentially like, "Oh, look, they forfeited again, uh, undefeated <laughs> season." And then yeah. you know, he talks about how you know, and it goes into this whole thing about how he doesn't like sports and. Uh, whenever you tell a group of guys that they look at you like you took a cock out of your mouth to say it and it's like just <laughs> how he it, and it's about him being dealing with Asperger's yeah, a joke but, that is so particular to him and doesn't even sound like it's that dirty those are the best kind of jokes the ones that are so specific to your life but also coming from a family of athletes so okay. it's, it's this very true true and personal very personal, very real, not filthy, not not gratuitous, just this very honest story. So he went into that and then he goes into Did he give you a reason why he can't do that joke? He said it was too dirty. What? But but it's it's not like you have kids at these like your exactly. material, a lot of your material is very dark. This isn't a children's comedy kids, show. Right? When you say you and you say a good, let's be conservative, what 30%? Is like kids should not be hearing these jokes. Yeah, one hundred. Uh, yeah, I it, absolutely. Easily. Well, okay. I hate seeing kids at a show. I that's like it ruins my mood. I, I go, I go. God damn! I prepared this whole set a certain way, and there's a fucking fifteen year old sitting in the front row. I'm like, why are you doing this to me? Okay, do I really want to be the person that like <laughs> exposes? I don't know what your kid knows or doesn't know. I'd prefer they not be here. They, if they're not old enough to drink, they should not be at a comedy show. They haven't lived enough life to experience and understand what the hell people are saying on stage. I dub, as a real pet peeve. And he would say stuff to me before shows of like, uh, let's keep it clean, which when you're me, you're like, what the f-? You're, you're just holding it in. Like, why? Like, I this has been me for 20 years. You yeah. skipped a decade and you're going to tell me keep it clean and i'm like oh uh, yeah let me do that for you let me just okay. give up on what yeah, i do sounds so craft. controlling right, right. yeah you feel like because that's kind of what comics do when they can't do well and he can do well it's his audience and yeah. it's not that he's gonna do poorly it's just an insecurity to go mm-hmm. you know you keep it clean don't do the it's pathetic it's not necessary you know, he's mad not, he doesn't need to do that it's just is that just he's him definitely put- not tiptoeing around this like he is alluding to Crowder being controlling to being insecure, insecure about comedy, uh, contr- wanting to control other people's sets, which is ugh. worry about what you're going to say on stage <laughs> like that enough to worry about. Putting his, you know, what on the table kind of thing. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And it's unnecessary. He's going to do fine. And that, that's what I never got. It's like, why why swing your dick around when it's its not necessary? Right. Okay. Hmm. So wow. in that, you know, he then, this very oddly telling thing, he's like, this is why you don't have any friends. And I was like, what are you, like, Wait, literally. So I don't even think Dave is that dirty. I'm like, come, I'm coming to think of it. All the, all the times I've seen him perform, like, I would say, he's not dirty. I would say I'm definitely dirtier than Dave. Yeah. And in well, the next room, in, in, in all fairness, I had been texting him that. <laughs> oh, well, I wish I, you would have told me. I said, I am so sick of Landau. He does zero numbers on my show. I the guy's never funny, and he can't it's keep true. it clean. And by clean, I mean his underwear. <laughs> and hmm. he won't, he will not pay attention to the cum light, yeah. which is what I call it. It's the yes. gutter's life. Yes. And uh, the nice, pearly he, white. Yes. And uh, yes. Uh, they're referring to earlier in the interview. He said that uh, Crowder w- told him to stop saying the word "come" <laughs> on the show, which is like, how how much was he really saying it if he told him to stop saying it? And that there's also a light in their, I guess, podcasting room that Crowder would turn on when he wanted Dave to shut up or just not interrupt, because that's very much the style uh, at Compound Media is people interrupting each other, but in a friendly way. You, it's it's just part of having the, the rhythm of a bouncing back and forth. It's banter. There's like interrupting banter, which is you're adding something funny that's timely that needs to be said right away. It's different than that, and then being a, it's a, 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 an ego fight. You know, we're like, oh, I need to be the one speaking. It's like, no, the way that Dave is talking, like probably the interrupting that he is used to doing from that we're all used to doing from Compound and and how Opie and Anthony would would go Jim Norton same way all have the same sense of humor like you 
you have something that has to be said pretty quickly because it's a play on words or you're, you know, you know you're escalating the joke. And I'm sure that's what Dave uh, was doing on Crowder, but like, which is an, it's a yes anding. It's you're adding to the bit. You, you create bits together on these podcasts and you both create and build and it gets more inappropriate and funnier. And, and it just seems like Crowder didn't like that. Didn't he wanted to build his own thing? He didn't like Dave sort of yes anding or maybe getting in the punchlines or saying something funnier. So he just would turn this light on and that would mean Steven wants to rant and doesn't want him to jump in with a, with a punchline or bit or anything like that, which is so stifling for a, a, any comedian who is, is used to working that way. And that's how you have fun on a podcast. So to be told, no, you can't do that. You just have to sit there and wait till the end. It's like, all right, well, now you have all these funny lines that you could have said in the moment, but now aren't as funny if you say them after he's done with his rant. So <laughs> that really blows. Uh, it was it was such an odd thing though to say that because you said I'm that like, you have no friends. Yeah, and I was like, <laughs> listen, I have plenty. They're just dead. Yeah, and uh, no, it's funny because I'm like, no, I. Literally That's a horrible thing to say. Have... This is why you have no friends. It's a hor- this is a horrible thing to say to somebody, even if it is true. Everybody who grew up next door to me, like the godfather of my son, grew up in the house behind me. I've never lost. A wait, friend. wait, I'm sorry. What? What is okay? <laughs> I'm, I'm, this is where so my weird. autism is coming in. When mm-hmm. he said, this is why you don't have any friends, what is the this referring to? Not being clean? I guess the this is uh, because I was kind of giggling. Oh, like, I'm sure. Wow, so he felt he was, yeah. from your perspective, insulted. being so over the top. Yes, and I'm sure, I mean, you. I'm sure it's, the phone call was recorded so we can always hear it and i'm not saying that to be a jerk i'm just saying that he legitimately records his phone calls right and we learned that from the whole thing with uh jeremy from the daily wire i'm gonna grab some of the supers um oh it's frank that's your comment uh do you think lando had to write stand-up material for crowder it certainly sounds like he was propositioned to do that i and i haven't listened to this whole interview I wonder if at any point he, because I think he's pissed enough that he would admit that he wrote some bits for him or helped him tighten some things up. But that's an interesting point. Mesh frequency. Thanks for the super chat. I once super chatted you. And then you asked me what I do. I said visual effects. Then you said I was gay for it. It broke my heart. Now I got over. I'm so sorry. I can't believe I said that. Visual effects is not gay unless you're doing visual effects for like RuPaul's Drag Race. It's gay. You think it's gay, Frank? It depends what kind of... It, are you working on movies? Like, I'm sorry. I called your profession gay. Uh, Don, what's up, Don Darius? Thanks for the super chat. Mouse is how I found out about you. Then you are how I found FNT. Wow. You are the alt-right pipeline. Hail. That's really cool. Usually it's... um. FNT first, and then people find out about me. But that's awesome. Thanks, Don Darius. Oh, it's Frank again. If that Leonard told you not to close with a joke, you would definitely open with that same. Would you definitely open? Oh, defiantly open with the same joke. Ah, it depends. Like, God, it really depends. Like, if I was opening for somebody now, it would probably be somebody who's pretty big, and I would probably want them to like me. I think it all depends on how they told me. Like how this was communicated and why. I have to be a pretty damn good reason. If if it's I'm too dirty, it's like, well then we shouldn't be working together. Like you should have known this before going into it. <laughs> but that would be funny to open with the joke. <laughs> that was your closer. What's up, base shaman? Shaman? Thanks for the super chat. Land I was holding back compared to compound. Uh yeah. I feel like he was very much creatively stifled, which can't feel good. But again, you're probably like, oh, this is Ladder with Crowder. There's a fuck ton of people watching me. I- I'm sure, even though this really, the situation sucks that Dave was in, it was definitely a net positive because he wouldn't have been exposed to the audience that he was had he not been on Ladder with Crowder, you know, at all. If he had stayed a compound, like he, you know, you have to try different things and branch out if you want to grow. Okay. 
Well, that's why he has more friends than you. That's so you know, petty you know, and crazy to say this is why you don't have any friends. Like, what are we in middle school? What grown man says that to another grown recording man? Recording this right. <laughs> no. Why wouldn't you? You said this was a call between friends. Why, why do you would do I, this? I would never refer to myself as your friend in any class. What? <laughs> I own you. You told me that this was something that, why would I share this information publicly? I could get in trouble. Do you know that he does some sort of karate? Is he, he making fun of him for doing karate? karate oh. Or break oh. a board. He could. He could break uh -oh. a board. Yeah. He could put on an outfit, and in that time, I could get in my car and leave. <laughs> ever think about that? <laughs> yeah, you ever, you ever think about while you're putting on your outfit, I might have time to go? <laughs> Folks, Michael Malice here, podcaster, author, and yes, underwear model. Sheath is something that I wear every day, and the great thing about sheath underwear Ooh, is that... Can we just take a moment to appreciate... Michael Malice and his underwear. Okay. Dual pouch technology for both parts of your anatomy. They also have a girl's line. I don't, I don't wear that stuff. Dave Smith might. Go to shoesunderwear.com. <laughs> use promo code Malice. You get 20% off. Yeah, who knew he had quads? Okay. You so, know uh, that he does some sort of karate? Z biotics. It is the one off. Thank you. Yes. And uh, it's so odd because, like, I, I considered... It's still in a way like he I he was like my friend and that's why I even feel odd talking about it. But it has to like come out somehow because he it, you know when you, you start getting treated like that, you're like, okay, well he's not looking back to my entire track record of my life of like I don't hold the phone. There's not even five hundred likes on this stream. What do you guys what do why do we come on? What do I have to go back, put on a lower cut top, and come back? <laughs> Let's get the likes up, guys. Uh, I need you to click the notification button. Click a little likey. Click a little likey like button, please. All right, back to the thing. I don't talk about my friends. I don't attack my friends. I do have friends from when I was from when I was a little kid. I don't treat my employees like shit. I don't have the turnover rate of an opium den. You know what I mean? It's like I, it it's been a difficult <laughs> time, and all of a sudden I had a really good night. And I had a decent year of stand-up, and my agent came there. Oh, and this, this is part is thing. nuts. I'm just, just kind of adding on where my agent had come there. And the whole year, I was like, look, he kind of wants me to be there on Fridays, even though he's not showing up. And my agent was he's this uh, gay Cuban dude who was like, well, if you're working with me, you need to be working. So he would just always book my shows out. But then all of a sudden... Wait, so how many, how many times did he no show on a Friday... Before you were like, okay, this is ridiculous. Probably eight or nine. Wow. Oh, oh good lord. Okay, this is so like literally like never three. he's there on Friday. No. But you so he literally had him working on Fridays to prevent him from booking road work. That's insane. You're just we, sitting. What? It's just. Are you just sitting there writing, twiddling your like? Literally, what are you know, doing? No, we may. We would make our own sketches, like Moses okay. and uh, this Moses sketch, like Handy Ass was one. Some other stuff, but eventually we couldn't get them greenlit, so we just kind of weren't doing anything. So I was just like, I'm just. But I, my family, you know, my family's not there. My kid's not there, and enough yeah. is enough, and I'm going. Wait. So did you at some point like decide, hey, instead of me coming to the office, let me call to see if Steven's there? Uh, so I don't have to waste the trip. Um, I they would decide on the day, and you know Gerald would say like, "Look, even if we're not going to uh, be there, yes. we need you there. Yes, even yes. if you're just going to sit there and do nothing." And I was like, "Oh yeah, I'm not going to do that at all." Which like, is they said crazy because it's not like Dave Lando was a small fish. Like it's not like he was nobody before getting on Ladder with Crowder. Like he was hosting next to Anthony Cumia. Like he was definitely well established, well established comic. D booking many dates on the road by himself so it, it would it seems like an insane expectation i think yeah crowder wanted him to him to eventually become dependent on him even though he was completely independent before joining the show that's very controlling explicitly that even if we're not who's gerald he's his producer uh he's the ceo now but he okay. was one of the uh co-hosts okay uh, so second chair okay so he said to you even explicitly, even if we're not there, we need you there. Yes. 
But I mean, if anyone's needed there, it's him. It's his show. You're not needed. Like, I'm not trying to be mean, but you're literally not needed there ever. Like, it's his Correct. show. He's the one who is needed to be there to be a show. If you're missing, it's fine. If he's missing, it's a problem because it's Steven's show. Yes, he's killing it on Rumble without me. It's fine. I knew that. Okay. That's the truth, though. It's that's the reality. And I kept saying, like, no, I'm going to go live, live my live my life. That was the problem is like, dude, I'm making money. I'm going on the road. I'm making money for the first time and building an audience and building an audience. And, and I'm that's making the other thing. Like I've seen, sorry to interrupt you, but I mean, people, I just want to talk about this a little slower. Uh, people really mm -hmm. get off. But not, I'm not trying to be cute. The people you see on your screen, the people in the chat that are saying they don't, well, they don't. Yeah. If, if you don't like them, that's fine. But like when you say Carrie, like you don't trust Dave is being honest. Like I'm curious. What is making you say that? Um, because what what reason would he have to lie? What if it just all went south and he was salty? But it seems like he was very much creative, creatively stifled on that show. Means when you see them live and in person, it's a very different experience. And I've done that myself. Like I've gone to see people I like, and it's like it's so much fun when you go. Oh, there they are! It's it's such a especially after COVID to see them live and in person. It's very very exciting, and and you love and you love to have an excuse to to throw them money with a ticket and support them. Yes. And it's something that I've really not experienced. I mean, I would have a bit of that after being on Compound, but most of my entire career was going to the middle of nowhere, wherever I was booked and getting an audience to like me. Yeah. So to finally have an, an audience, it was the first time in my life and I was really grateful for it. You know, you just go to these places and there's people who were wearing, you know, shirts with my face on them and it was exciting. And how it, ugly do you have to be if you want to have Lando on your shirt to distract oh, from your mug? Some talk of them were, were talk gross. About, talk about but you get a pretty mug. one. <laughs> <laughs> Occasionally you get a pretty girl, and I'd be like, okay. why, why are you like me? But yeah, no. I it was, when you saw that shirt, she's very, you go, you, I own you. I would. I would be like, that's mine. I wouldn't like it if somebody yeah, I was working with closely was like a known phone call recorder. That's like, ugh, I don't know. That doesn't. Put me okay, in. so they told you explicitly, we, we need you here on Fridays, even if we're not here. And you said, I'm not doing that. It, and I, I never agreed to it. I okay. agreed to some, you know, and it was the same as. You was know, it the point it, of contention? Big time. Okay, let's talk about that. Big time it was. And then, but my agent wasn't going oh. to stop it's booking okay. me anyway. Okay. So I was getting good money. So I was like, all right, I'm going to do this. But then Stephen wanted to do a tour together. Okay. So this is circa when? Uh, this is shortly after the Dallas show in 2022. Okay, so like early 2022. So we did a couple of shows that were 50. Wait, 50. I'm sorry. We, there's a, there's an important part here that that I yes. think we skipped over. <laughs> if someone a boots my friend from their show, which is their prerogative, it's their show, right? Yeah. And then they call me up screaming. Mm -hmm. The next time I see them, it's going to be weird. I would imagine like what happened after that? Like how did that resolve? And how did you see him next time? Did you have to smile and nod? Uh, no, I came in and he said, uh, what was it? He apologized in a weird way. It was, um, you asked me in a weird way is what he said. And I said, how? And he said, you asked me in front of a lot of people in the green room. And I said, it was just me and you. And he's like, well, it's was not accurate. What he no, it's just not accurate. But it was more like I was so used to the gaslighting at this point mm. that I was like, "What? Okay, I, I'm like, but he did a great job." And he's like, "Well, I didn't know him, and I just saw how he did in front of the crowd, so I don't know how he would have been on radio." He and I was killed. Like, he could have just said no, right? Or he, said, he kept him from doing a lot of with Crowder. This uh, this opener guy, McClowry. Like, he tried him out once. It's I mean, a lot of these shows work well when they have like a, a big roster. Because it makes the host look better. I mean, Gutfeld does this very phenomenally. Uh, Red Eye, which, you know, you were on Red Eye as well, weren't you? Yes. Um, you know, I, look how many people came out of Red Eye. Me, you, Tim Dillon, Andrew Schultz. Like, there's just no shortage of people who, you know, Kaylee McEnany. Oh, thanks, uh, Bill man. Schultz, just so many people came out of that show. Yes. So it, it was just a matter Ooh. of, and I know Matt's great because I've been on Lila the here. show. He did that a lot of times and people loved him. And that's a crowd of people who want to hate you. Right. So it was something that, I knew it would work, but then he never. And I'm sorry, up. like he's like this is no disrespect to Matt, and I, it, it, he is the perfect sideshow. 
because yeah. he's a freak yeah and he knows he's a freak like that's a lot of his humor it's like it's look i'm wired to either of you. From you guys i mean i'm basically an alien like let's laugh at it together and he's going to land something in the middle of what we're talking about that we're not going to see right because right. his brain literally works differently than ours does absolutely and, it's... and he's perfectly happy being the punchline yep which is the best part. yeah which is what he's talking about like the the way of doing a podcast where you kind of not one up each other but you're all like throwing in tags and you're building a bit together when you have someone like mclowry who i guess if he is like truly autistic whose mind works so differently than each of them then that's that person is an asset on a show not competition I mean, if you can't take a joke, why be there? And that's a difficult, that's very difficult, you know, with Steven. And Matt ended up touring. He ended up hosting the shows. Um, I took care of him myself out of pocket. Uh, and we ended up doing this tour together. Now, the first couple of shows were 50-50. And then the money changed. And all of a sudden, I noticed that I wasn't allowed to promote my own shows on Crowder. I guess it was behind the paywall. Ooh. Right before How are you the you're not allowed to promote your show. Like the shows would start, and two minutes before showtime, somebody would walk out to me and go, Hey, you can't promote your show today. The, there was never a reason given. No, it was just wow. Was no you know what that says to me? That says that it sounds like Steve uh Crowder is is so insecure about people coming to see his stand-up that he knows deep down people are coming because Dave is the better stand-up. But he doesn't want Dave blowing his audience on on the dates that just Dave is doing, I guess, without Crowder. So he doesn't want him to spend his audience on just seeing Dave. He wants him to save his audience for when they are doing gigs together, which is so crazy, selfish and insecure and uh, it's so out of line. I don't care how rich and famous you are. Like, that's insane. Like he's an asset to your show. Let the guy book his like promote his fucking gigs. More to it is like demeaning. So you'd be like, oh, oh thanks, great. Was the, okay, let's let me try. Let me play devil's advocate. Was yeah. it the kind of thing when you were on the show, you would just use any excuse to bring up your show to promote it? So mm -hmm. they wanted to kind of pull back on that. No, never once. He just wanted to promote his shows that we were both on together, or the ones that he started doing in clubs which I realized that my agent was booking that even though I had asked my agent, if he started repping Steven, I was never given a straight answer until obviously I figured oh. out that that night in Dallas. So he got his agent, agent to rep him. To sign Steven. And wow, okay. now it was his bigger client. And I so he got Dave's agent to rep him and his stand-up shows. And now it sounds like both Crowder and the agent are being hush hush about it, which is so sketchy. Uh, of course, the agent's gonna say yes. Yeah, Crowder's a big name. Of course, you want to rep him. Uh, but yikes! Like, why? Why lie about that? And I was told by him that he was really there. He's like, and even when I asked him at first, he's like, "Sign who? I, what do you mean work with them? I don't know what you mean work with them. What? Uh... You know, it was sort of this very roundabout way, until I realized like, oh, I keep getting uh, fucked here, and I keep getting like less. I, I never get a bump and raise, and now I'm. It, it, things started getting progressively worse where okay. I could never promote my shows. And all of a sudden, it got, it got really bad to the point where my agent oh, was That's yelling so at me, crazy to me because like, that is the opposite of, of, of what I have on Friday Night Tights. Like, those guys go out of their way to, to even they'll promote my shows for me when I feel like, oh, I don't want to make it about me. They'll be like, Chrissy, your show, your show's coming up. Especially now with this Vegas trip coming up, like they'll promote my shows when I forget. Uh, so I can't imagine having somebody telling you not to promote your shows. <sighs> Insane. Um, okay, let's go to some soups. Based shaman watched quartering on this. Seeing Malice's laughing face in the video is the definition of chaos neutral, considering Jeremy uh, deafening silence on Sydney's lol suit. Uh, Jeremy meaning the quartering, or Jeremy meaning like Jeremy on. Oh, oh, okay. You probably mean Jeremy quartering. Hmm. Yeah, I haven't heard that much about that lawsuit. 
Daniel Cabin, thanks for the super chat. Crowder's behavior sounds a lot like Tim Pool's. Oh, but Tim never like tried to perform anywhere. I mean, he does those speaking events, but I've never heard Tim like be controlling over events and things like that. Uh, Vegas Nomics, thanks for the super chat. I always preferred Dave as host of Louder with Crowder. Steven is way too uptight. Love your show, Chrissy. Oh, thank you. Base charm and I hold mouse. Is voodoo responsible for this? <laughs> What's up, Ashley? He seems pretty genuine to me. I watched this earlier. Yeah, I think so too. I know nothing about this popcorn, popcorn. Hi, huh, Nina. Zombie licorice. Licorice that never dies. Fans want authenticity these days. Chrissy, you came off as authentic. Here, Dave comes off as very authentic. Apparently, Crowder is one of the fakest right wing YouTubers out there. Not a good look. Man, I wonder why that is. Because he's so successful and he, it, he's he's knowledgeable. It's not like he's yeah, has to fake it or anything. What's up, Spectral? Hair is looking great. Today. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Spectral. Tyson, thanks for the super chat. Crowder is just a B. I think that means bitch. I used to love him, but he's pretty pathetic at this point. What's worse are his fanboys that just think he does no wrong. I still respect much of the work he's done, though. Right, if you are, like, if you were a Crowder fan first and you're not also a comedy fan, I can see how you would just easily, blindly take his side on all this. But if anyone who's a comedy fan or has done comedy themselves can understand the situation that, that Dave is in. What he's doing is not cool. How he's treating him on these gigs is not appropriate. You don't want to work with somebody who's, and he has no reason to be controlling. He's the bigger name. He, he's like, he's good. Nero and Axum and Bear. Great. Get Owen Benjamin on the show. He will tell you the real inside ass about Crowder. Also that Anthony C has downs or at least that he kind of looks like he does do you mean anthony cumia yeah i want to get owen on again he's great hard brock life thanks for the super chat as uh, as a longtime crowder fan i've seen him play the martyr card too frequently for it to be organic he will absolutely play the martyr card over this and his fans will mindlessly eat it up again i just don't think his hardcore fans probably appreciate comedy as much uh, mostly gluten. A good way to mess with recording. F uh, a good way to mess with recording phone calls would be putting heavily copyrighted music with it. <laughs> That's funny. Captain and Dragon. It's just convenient that Crowder is bringing real weight to the impact of making Rumble a viable alternative to YouTube, and then all these backbiters start showing up. Hmm. It's convenient that he's bringing real weight to the. Um, I don't think they're related. I think, I don't think Dave's beef with Crowder has anything to do with Rumble. And Crowder is such a big name. He really can do whatever he wants. Like he could have made it work with Daily Wire or he could have made it work with Rumble. I think he's so big. He, he can just, he can choose whatever. Right, Lila? Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Lila. I had to bring Lila in as a fellow comedian uh, mm -hmm. who understands a lot of this stuff. Did you watch this Michael Malice interview at all with Dave? Um, I, I was watching when you were on, but I was thinking, like, wouldn't it be funny if when you have me feature for you, you're like, Lila, no short jokes, no dirty jokes. <laughs> Those are my, don't have any jokes about being handicapped. That's kind of my <laughs> thing. And you're like, bitch, what the fuck? <laughs> That's so controlling. I can't. I just can't believe that. And like, I don't know when I became somebody who ha started having hosts and people opening for them. It it's almost like you want to be overly cool to work with. Cause it's not just you. It's like you're affecting someone else's night and you, you want them to have a good experience too and get the most out of it that they can. It's like, uh, also it's like, like, wouldn't you want your opener and your feature to do well? Cause they warm up the crowd for you. And then yeah. you get in with like a hot crowd that's like ready to laugh. And and also like I just thought that was crazy when he was like, don't to have him not do that joke. It's like we're you're gonna censor people on a comedy stage. What? And it's not like 
Crowder has a joke about being an autistic wrestler. It's not like it's at all similar to any of his bits. It just makes you sound super insecure. Like you don't want this comic to kill on their last joke before you go up. And then it takes you, I don't know, five minutes to get a laugh or whatever it is. I've never heard Crowder stand up, but man, that really sucks. And you want the crowd to be as hot or warm as they can be because it, it makes them easier laughers for your set. Yeah. Nick S, regardless of which version, Crowders or Dave's, will never know the truth. The only truth that can be gained from Dave's departure from Ladder with Crowder is that you should never go into business with any friends that you wish to keep. I don't know that they were friends before this. But, yeah, I get what you're saying. It's tricky. Jeremy David, how many more co-hosts does Crowder need to burn? Who was his co-host before Dave? Did he have a co-host? I thought it was just like, I thought it was always like the, the Steve show. And then he's got kind of like booth boys that are on camera. And then, and then Dave came on and he, he seemed more like a co-host. Uh, Christian, Tim, Adam, Elijah, Sydney, and now these two. I'm not even surprised anymore. Though Landau did seem it wasn't a big deal during his last interview with Malice. Yeah, I mean, like, it's just kind of inevitable that people are going to not, you know, not always be a perfect match. What's up, Cecil? Just got home. Don't know what's going on, but I still feel like this is Brittany's fault. <laughs> ah, Cecil. <laughs> Were you drunk last night, Cecil? Guys, if you're not liking and subscribing this broadcast, I'm going to start blocking people, okay? <laughs> yeah, hit that like button or I'm going to come to your house and eat your dog. And she's going to eat your dog mm -hmm. and, and steal your cat. Look, my cat shit. Oh, it's so cute. It's looking at me. Wow, the eyes match the shirt color. That's great. That's, that's like something I feel like a woman who lives in upstate New York would wear. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is I want that shirt. Uh since a shark bait, bummer, I've enjoyed watching Dave, but what he's saying seems plausible. Steven does have an ego. Yeah. You just can't when you go on the road with somebody, it's like either you naturally get along or you gotta fucking work at getting along because you're both doing the same job, which is like entertaining the shit out of this crowd. I also think it's interesting, too, how he asked Dave to, like, write bits for him. And, the, like, Dave was the, the stand-up originally. And I don't know. It's just – and I don't like how he was like, I own you. Like, who talks? That's horrible. Ugh. I own you. I mean, especially when you – like, don't – there's no reason to let him know that. Like, Dave knows he's the bigger name. Dave knows he makes a lot more money. But for him to then go out of his way and say something like, I own you, is so icky. That's funny. Uh huh. We're trying to pick a layout. I like the other one. This one? Yeah. 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 doesn't get pissed, then I don't give a shit. But he would do. He, well, he literally raised his voice also. My agent was screaming at me, and that's when he and I, like, I fired him once, and it was already. He was screaming at me in my car. He's like, go in there and do your job. And I go, I am doing my job. I go, that's the problem is I've always done my job. There's no complaints from the company that I don't do my job. That's right. the thing. The only complaint I ever had uh, was that I fell asleep a couple times, but it wasn't because I was up all night doing below and banging whores. It's because I write for the show or it was that I was late, which guilty. And I'll say that because... Mm. They wanted me there. I've seen a lot of people talking about this this piece on Twitter. I guess Dave showed this. He had a contract that said he can't be more than five minutes late or something like that, or he has to leave and go home for the day with no pay. And some folks think, like, that's a fucking insane thing to put in a contract. Other people think, well, there must have been a reason for that to have been put in the contract. Maybe Dave was just chronically late and it was put in the contract so that he would be better about not being late. But I didn't know Dave to be Dave was not like chronically late on uh, compound media. So I mean, how much is this contract? I have no idea. I don't I, just, I have no idea how much he was making. If the contract's really good, you can put that little clause in for me. 
I won't. True. I, again, I would be too like insecure just generally to be late. If I had this big of a job, I would be fucking at least 15 minutes early every day. Like I would be too scared to even be a little late, but again, like, I don't know if he was late a lot or what, what the hell was even based on it's seven o'clock or seven fifteen or five yeah. fifteen. Yeah. Five fifteen. Yeah. It would depend on what they wanted to do that day. And okay. I couldn't figure out, like, I couldn't get into a rhythm of it. And they kept changing what they wanted to do, like what time, when to come in, what the thing was, what the job was, what the mm -hmm. this, the that, you know, and, if you text me at 11 o'clock at night to write something, I'm going to be up until one, maybe two writing it. If you text me at six o'clock and you want me there at seven, well, I need to write it. So I'm not going to get there until 8.15, but I don't go live until 9.15. But I wasn't treated as talent. I was kind of treated like um, a writer, you know, like more of a nine to five employee, yeah. which oh. I had zero interest in being. Right. So he's Even saying he I, felt I, like I, he had to be I there when he didn't really need to be. seven employee, though, if that makes sense. Yes. I don't mind, you know, always pitching the show. I, did, I had, you know, ads made every day. I always was pumping it. I always talked about it. I always said good things. I met every fan that went to every show. I didn't mind being a 24 seven employee, but I wasn't. But you want me to be there nine to five. And then you also want me to be there at. 9 p.m. when you need me and then you sounded want to like he wanted Clara with Crowder to take up the whole of his life and he and maybe Crowder was trying to figure out like ooh, how do we spread him so thin that he doesn't have time to tour on his own god I really hope that's not the case that sounds bad Ugh. but again it's like you wonder how much he was making like at what point does it become not worth it yeah I guess that's a uh... Up to the individual. That's the thing is like, I feel like I can deal with a lot of bad treatment. I'd be like, oh, if I'm getting a lot of money, but you get to, everyone has their breaking point of like, okay, now I'm just being like blatantly disrespected. It's like, that's not what I'm there for. Right. I, I'm there to be your, your sidekick, which is fine. And then I'm there to, to write the things you want me to write. And it's, that's, it's cool. It's fine. But it was always, for somebody who always uses the term moving the goalpost, that's all it became. So we began touring together. And yes, uh, it was a very, it was very good money. And I paid Matt very well. But it always became something where nothing feels good, mm -hmm. even if you're making money, if you're being treated like you don't deserve it. Oh, yeah, for sure. So the whole time it felt like this is he was doing him a favor and it's being given to you. So it, the, even the whole tour, you just feel kind of like shit uh -huh. and it, it doesn't really matter. You know, you've just kind of, you're like, I'd rather just go back to clubs. I don't care. Mm. And we go on break in July. Whereas like, he never had this with Kumi. It always felt like, and Kumi never feels like you're working for a boss at all. Like, it just feels like you're working with him. It never feels like you're working for him. And that's probably what he was used to. And then Crowder is, like, very much like, oh, I'm working for you, which is more typical of a regular, you know, employee-boss type relationship. July 2022. This is July 2022. And um, we got a new showrunner who was doing our tour at the time named Jeff. Good guy. And uh, he... I get back from break and at this time I'd, and I, I wouldn't go into anything about Steven's family and I, I wouldn't want him to go anything about mine either, obviously. And, but somebody they in my family was very, thing, very right? sick and had been battling <laughs> something for you a while. Like, seriously. Playing with it? Okay. And one? he knew that. And I came back and he gave yeah, they had me an ugly, talentless family member. <laughs> yes. And it was just He's probably a lesbian. <laughs> It's me, and I'll tell you, uh, no matter how much work is done on this face, <laughs> this mug, yeah, God has cursed me. Uh, that's why they wanted to change mug club. Uh, it was just any association. And uh, so we... This is probably hard to talk about and so still want to be back, funny. And yeah. the first thing I do is I get brought to lunch, and I get presented with this option with a new contract. Now, Dave, before you talk about your contract and the importance of money... Let's talk a little bit about Patriot Gold and no. how to help people. Investor <laughs> misread it. It's like this is just simply the con. Officially, Patriots. Patriot in a row. So called eight 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 five. Officially, it's officially terminated as of August twenty twenty two, and the, my new choice is I have to be there Monday through Friday. I I gotta probably look at the stipulations. If you want me to pull it up real quick? Yeah, pull it up. Yeah, I can send one to you. It's uh. 
But it was, um, and I can just, I can even just read it. It says, yeah, read it. And yeah. This was sent to my agent, and it's like, this is just simply the contract. It was, uh, William, just need a yes. I agree on all the revised items from Dave, and this is what Jeff showed me at lunch. And it was, once I, I get uh, with our legal team on the revised contract below, it stays on salary, so no extra money, moves uh, to Texas, uh, moves his family to Texas uh, by the new year. First Wait, so you are that that part of your contract, a proposed mm -hmm. contract, was that your family has to be moved across state lines. Correct. Including your kid. You have a son. How old's your son? Eight. Seven okay. at the time. Okay. So pull him out of school during yeah. the school year and he's coming to Texas. Okay. Yeah. Dave is oh, here so every week have to... unless he notifies us. So he wouldn't have need the excuse of, oh, I need my weekends so I can visit my family. Move your family so you don't need your weekends to visit them. Well in advance for a show, just like a doctor's appointment. Can't be gone any more than every third weekend. No, wait. So let's break this down also. Stephen has started touring as a comedian. Yes. Stephen is no dummy. Stephen is well, very well aware that you and every comic weekends are when you tour, hit the road, you make the money. So he is very um, clearly taking that secondary or even primary, possibly at this point, source of income from you because you're just going to be sitting in Dallas uh, for no reason. Because it's not like you're doing shows on the weekends with Crowder. Right. And gone every other third weekend means every six weeks. Okay. And then rights for show every well, I got day. I'm sorry. I, 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 I just want to break this down. Did Was it ever said to you or intimated to you that your touring is affecting somehow your performance or writing for the main show? Good question. Oh, my writing? No. Uh, they felt that I had nodded off a few times, oh. which really only happened maybe once or twice on a Monday because of like a delayed flight. Okay. But okay. Tough shit. I right. mean, that's okay. my opinion. I don't care. Okay. Like, it, you know, like Anthony never would have cared. He, Anthony okay. was mm -hmm. so full. Like mm -hmm. Anthony would promote my stand up where I don't even think I, I would really have to. Okay. It, you know, it was, yeah, that's how, okay. even when you look back at the Opie and Anthony days, that's how everybody was making money. But at the same time, it's also like, if you're going to be up at seven or what o'clock, you have to be there at seven. Yeah. You're not exactly Blech. the old chipper. It's not like you're. No, no he I'm was used to the like the Kumi show was like four to six <laughs> PM. And they just show up and they are themselves. There was like no writing involved. So all his free time was spent on, writing and touring stand-up and he literally just had monday through thursday four to six hosting with anthony and now he goes to this basically nine to five job too yeah and you know so i'm i'm always working there's not one assignment that i didn't turn in and i have every screen grab to do that there's nothing that i ever i and ever in fact you're writing up. a lot of sketches that just didn't get greenlit so you're doing extra work as in addition to what did get greenlit oh yeah this is the that's the next part which is okay. Uh, writes for show every day in the form of sketches, in studio bits, pulling from previous sketches, uh, previous show ideas, and that can be turned into sketches. So that's just busy work that I did every day, just for the sake of busy work, which I, I'll be honest, I hate. Hmm. It, it seems so pointless for a show to do, but it's his show. But it's like, why don't we make the best show we can do? instead that's like that's why i think snl like just comes off like it's written by the cia because you're just <laughs> throwing five billion things at the wall okay i want to address this super chat um from magnum north conservatives need to stop attacking each other yes the rhinos need to go but now we're going after crowder i don't think anybody is going after crowder and again like this this situation inter interests me particularly from a stand-up comedian's yeah. point of view and how how a headliner is supposed to treat their support on tour and how it's like, it's not just headliner support relationship. It's like, this is like, they're also involved in his working. So it's like, rarely ever does your day job and your stand-up comedy touring mix at all. Like most of us have day jobs for years. We, we do stand-up on the side, but now finally his his day job, which is also comedy related, is controlled by the same person. Like, so it's like his day job boss is controlling his stand up. 
And that's uh no one's going after Crowder. Like I I I still like Crowder. I just think this is interesting, like how he treats people and trying to decide, okay, are these weird behaviors coming from a place of insecurity? Uh, I still think he's a he's a force, he is a culture mover. Crowder Crowder's voice is very important. Again, like he's doing great things with Rumble. Like that is completely unrelated to how you treat somebody when you uh go on the road with them and work with them, you know, and stand up. Instead of going, let's take these seven things and master it. Yeah. You know, I just feel like whenever we would do that, like whenever I would host the show and we would put together a show, a sketch that morning, it would look really good, at least for what I wanted, because it was we were focusing on one thing, not trying to make 3000 things and then going, well, this half ass one should 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 work yeah now man granted he has millions and millions of followers but his show was once that that first idea not just throwing everything just to have busy work to mm -hmm. look like a hard worker yeah yeah he was a hard worker now it's an illusion you know <laughs> the next thing <laughs> is uh, he doesn't he's work hard start his own show by <laughs> his own friday show he really flips in those zingers so i have a show every friday <laughs> for no extra money so okay, I can't so tour on me, Fridays. Let's break this down. So you are going to have your own show, which is a plus. Yes. But you're not getting paid a single dime to host your own new show on right. his network or his platform. Correct. And at, in fact, it's costing you money because now you can't be out, you know, doing two shows on Friday night in Tahoma or whoever the hell cares, somewhere, some of the city. Right. Okay. So then... I've never heard of that. I'm sorry. I've never heard of someone saying, I'm giving you your own show. You're not getting paid for it. I don't understand that. Right. right. And that was kind of the I own you aspect. And then okay. um, the uh, hours. But that, that's the thing. You're If you're doing your own show, they're making money from ad sales or, or at the very least adding value to the network because now there's more content and you're not seeing a cent of that. Right. And that okay. was sort of what it was before where it was we're going to sweeten the pot and that didn't happen right but it did happen in the sense of road dates okay right so i didn't complain but right. then i can't do road dates unless he's on them now mm -hmm. right so basically okay. i have to give up my stand-up career right your solo so then the career, next yeah. thing is hours monday through thursday 7 a.m to 3 p.m and then you know, Friday, here's the thing I, I also want you to give up your stand-up career but i'm actually prepared to pay you like a substantial amount of money <laughs> because I just, I just think it's for the greater good <laughs> i know but but we both know we both know it's not though. i want to make sure i got all these relevant comments from you guys sam you ride thanks for the super chat i'm a crowder fan first but this puts what he did with daily wire in perspective crowder is too defensive especially with friends and allies on the same side this is sad yeah, it sucks yeah. that he let his somewhat controlling nature and his insecurities uh, affect his relationship with Dave, basically. Doc Bruski, Christy, last night was a maze ball. It was something. <laughs> What's up, Cecil? Wasted. I drank three whiskeys before the show. Okay. Mr. Smith, Christy, I'll be there for your Dallas show. Yay! Lila will be there too. I'll be, I'll be there. And I'm only allowed to do certain jokes that are Chrissy approved. Right. You have to submit them in advance. <laughs> Gabriel Knight, did Alex Stein really have a blow up with Victoria Jackson on his show? Or was that a bit? I don't know about that. Magnum Norse. Oops, I almost put you in a timeout. Dave is amazing, but he's going to lose without Crowder. What makes you say that? I think he'll do fine. I think he's still very talented. He he's not going to lose. Like the people that were fans of him on Crowder are not going to abandon him. Um, he can he'll make money. He'll make money on the road. He's got this new show with Quarter Black on the Blaze. He's gonna be fine. Uh, Mr. Smith, Crowder's former co-host was a guy named Not Gay Jared. Funny dude was in a lot of Crowder skits, then left the show. Oh, okay. Cool to know. Nero, I think he treated him that way because Owen Benjamin and NG Jared broke his gay heart. Now he just views his sidekicks and writers as NPCs or something like that. Mm. Oh, rockin'. I was a Crowder fan after he bailed on the 20 election fruit coverage. 
to go on vacation for two months. He lost me. Then he used day for views. Crowder sucks. Spicy take. Mark Leckman. Dave rules. Give him half of my two bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Base jam and Crowder sketches are terrible. Very cringy. God, I, I don't even know that I've seen his sketches. Uh, Freely, Ashley, you have to call it bad behavior regardless of who's doing it. What's up, push-ups? Lila, do small people take small poops? Wow. Um, No. Well, I've taken all kinds of poops, actually. Yeah. Muffin <laughs> takes bigger poops than me. So <laughs> but that's a me problem. Hard Rock Life. Crowder's fans are already making him a martyr. What? Like Dave is deep state, big con secret agent. The cope is real. Wow. That's so sad. Also, that's the case. I'm just happy I can poop. Okay, you guys. I'm happy I can poop. I'm really grateful about that. Yeah. Doctor said she could never poop again. Slosher. <laughs> Dave clarified on Twitter that the lack of promotions only happened in the last couple of weeks. Been a fan of Crowder since he had 300k subs. Sad that he seems insecure. He shouldn't be. He's talented. I agree with you 100%, dude. The Chad. Saw you and Lila in Austin. You both killed. Wish that Dave and Steven could have worked out better. Torn, but love them both. Love you too, Lalta. Love you. Aww. Aww. Frank Hebert, Kumi and Dave were awesome together. They were. They were. I've been seeing a lot of people in the chat saying they wish Dave had never left. Magnum Norse agreed, but if we don't unify them, we're done. We need unification. Come on, Dave. Please come back. We love you. I don't think that's going to happen. I think he said too much tea. NG Jared should be subtweeting tonight. What's his handle? Thank you. That's a shame. Oh, how patriotic. 1776 watching. God bless America. Now let's get those likes up. Oh, Lila, didn't you release your new documentary or the did the trailer come out? The trailer came out. Ooh, I watched it. It's very spicy. Did you like my voiceover? Yes. I was like, ooh, that's Lila being serious, Lila. Um, I was really happy if you with are a, a, a fan of Mr. Anthony Fauci, you will love Lila's late. When, so when does it come out? The summer? July 4th. Ooh. On the one year anniversary of American History of Voter Fraud. So it's gonna where be can they watch it? Um Lilahart.com slash documentary and it will be uploaded to YouTube. So okay, cool. We're gonna play the trailer after we're uh done with this Landau thing. Nero mm -hmm. Garcia Crowder may have pushed Dave out on purpose once he got wind of him talking to the blaze. Ooh, right, because because Dave has this new show now with Quarter Black Garrett called, uh, I think it's going to be called Normal World, which was, but I wonder if he pitched it to the blaze when he started to be like, okay, sh this isn't going well. I'm not, you know, it's, I'm feeling a little stifled. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder when he pitched it, but whatever, you know, can't blame him for, you know, sometimes you got to cheat on the old bitch. Before you get a new bitch. I don't know. Travis Schiffer. I've canceled my mug club because of this interview. Because of this interview? Or my interview? Wait a minute. We're just recapping it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Base jamming people. Two things can be true at the same time. Daily Wire shilling a predatorial contract. And Crowder is insecure. Cam. I hope both can come back together down the road. I love both. I know Crowder has gone through a lot. Because of his surgery and wife. No accuses though. True. JD, I kind of wish Dave would have taken a contract with Daily Wire at this point. Lol. Daily Wire is not a place for a comedian. It's very newsy, very serious. Uh, I think Daily Wire is, I would compare it more to like Turning Point. Uh, they just don't <laughs> they just don't seem like it's a huge uh, priority comedy, but like who knows? It might be in the future. Again, I was very surprised when they took Gina uh, Carano on and started producing films. I thought that was pretty cool. So who knows? Who knows what the future holds? Um. Okay, let's pull out this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, How much are we talking? No, 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 I'll sell. <laughs> <laughs> Just let me know. Like, I'm I'm a whore. You'd be surprised how little I go for. I uh, Actually, you wouldn't be. You'd be like, that seems too much. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I can get you a plastic cup with some Dr. Pepper remnants. Mm -hmm. Well, if, as long as there's a dirty nickel in it, you've got yourself a deal. Uh, we also... <laughs> uh, then it's hours Monday through Thursday, uh, 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. Okay. Friday, 9 to 5. Okay. 
uh, which is so I can never catch a plane out of town on a Friday to even do a Saturday. Then I have to be back on Sunday, making it impossible to see my child or do stand up. Yep. And then the next thing is comedy special releases through Louder with Crowder because he always felt that he owned my special, even though because he let me keep the door that night. Okay. Um, but I didn't sign anything that said, oh, you're letting me keep the door, so now you own my comedy? Wait, let's, so, let's, let's well, hold on. Let's slow down. Like People like Tim Dillon and Andrew, the aforementioned Andrew Schultz they and Lucy Case, another one, they've done gangbuster, gangbusters by Dave Smith, Libertas, with hit number one. Um, yes. They do great numbers and make bank by putting out their special themselves, cutting out the middleman, People are more than happy to toss 10 or 12, 20 bucks. I don't know how much it costs, but it's like, hey, listen, if I don't support this artist, he's not going to be able to pay the rent. I'm more than happy to chip in because I'm getting content that I enjoy. He's making me laugh. This is fair. Um, so his point was this comedy special, which wasn't have anything to do with him. It's your comedy, your stand up. Yep. It can only be, he's now just, even though for the same money, he's now going to kind of subsume that into his uh, um portfolio yes it's all it's all inclusive <laughs> wow okay and that's a non-negotiable yeah. non-negotiable term <laughs> okay how were you or, told, they were told you this is non-negotiable yeah and since <laughs> i know it's all everything's always being recorded i i was like you know what i'll just go ahead and record this too okay and i took a, a screenshot and then i was either that or i was 10.99 and, wow. and that would be for lower money. And it was these parameters that, and I'll send you that because I think it's only um, that included. Why don't you read them? You don't need me to send them. Um, post them. Um, please post. Do you want me to post them? I'll, I'll tell the staff to post them. <laughs> Just on this, I mean, if okay. you do a screenshot I'll of the first, I just don't want people to think that it's, yeah, some oh, just like his super dry delivery. <laughs> post them. Please, What's making you laugh, them. Lila? Oh, like, <laughs> what he's saying, he's like, he's like, no, you could just read. He's like, no, I want you to post them. He's like, I want people to see them. <laughs> you know, they want to pause it and read it themselves. That's funny. Made up thing because I, I just want people to know why I left, and this is simply between. Yeah. You know, I'm not going into a lot of things that are behind closed doors, but I'm just, sure. this is the reason I, I left. Um, sure. A few of the things that went in, this is goes into the back and forth. Um, studio Monday through Friday, 7.45 to 3.45. So now again, the times have changed. Okay. Just in a day. You know, so it's again, a uh, company will enforce a strict five minute tardy policy. Contract. Okay, that, that whole thing. Hold on a second. Let me let me. I'm going to mm. forward this right now before I forget. With um, is this the thing with the yellow? Um, no, the yellow was the last one. This one is just the first page of the independent contractor with one. everything and all the things handwritten. You want me to include that as well? Yes, this was what was eventually sent to me. Okay, and I'm going to send it right now to my producer so he'll put it up on the screen. Uh, and this eventually showed up on October. 2022 after i refused to sign anything starting when i returned in august because i just wouldn't sign anything and i just kept showing up to work like and they, kept, and they mm. kept and they kept paying you yeah they kept paying me forever okay, I, okay. and i took the money because sure. i earned it right but i'm, I'm just saying it, it wasn't like what are you doing here they could they did keep paying you yes okay so what i'm looking at right here and we're gonna have it on the screen um oh you're a third chair personality you weren't the second chair no, I was third chair. Okay. Oh, weird thing, um, um, but it's but the thing that's that's comp the, the thing that I'm seeing is company will enforce a strict five minute tardy policy. Uh, I, um, uh, uh, all right. Wow. Okay. Uh, company will strict strict five minute tardy policy, and then what it said fifteen minutes. Contractor agrees that if he arrives to work more than five minutes late, he is considered to be in breach of section one, must leave company premises, and will not be compensated for the day. For the breach occurred, contractor's breach of section 1.3 and 1.4 prohibits contractor from seeking reimbursement expenses for the day. If the breach occurred, 
Should contractor be asked to write anything prior or after should be considered part, uh, part of the agreed hours. Okay. This seems like a long, long, long ass contract. A contractor agrees that if he arrives to work more than five minutes late, he's in breach of section one, must leave company premises and will not be compensated for the day the breach occurred. Contractor's breach of section blah, 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 and you can't seek reimbursement for the days the breach occurred. So I don't think they even have this at McDonald's, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Like if you're five minutes late, like pack your crap and go home, how would that even be addressed on the air? Like where's Dave? Oh, Dave was five minutes late? Yeah, they go, how can you prove that? Well, our watches are different. Um, yeah, it's – this is when I had to now start dumping money into entertainment lawyers. So a lot of the money that I even made on tour by – Right. So, you know, entertainment that lawyers. became another issue. I mean, do you think he's exaggerating about being only five minutes late? I feel like people wouldn't complain if you were only five minutes late. It's hard to tell. Yeah. I wonder why they put that there in the first place. Do they put yeah. that in there for everybody or was it specifically for Dave? Uh, gosh, yeah. You don't know what other people's contracts said. This is a good point. So though. promotion, it says that they agree to promote your stand up once a week at a time and at in a medium of their discretion so correct. it could just be some <laughs> random post somewhere that no one wow sees. correct and that was because they had not been promoting me okay <gasps> mm -hmm. and i put that i would and it's in writing and what i gave them was i would actually give them uh, a commission of my sold out shows okay uh and a commission of the shows with an if they were willing to actually give to actually promote my shows. So because is that, it had, is that your handwriting that I'm looking at? Like yes, it is. Oh, so because, you said, okay, I'll give you guys 5% of the door if I sell out. Uh, 5% in general and 10% if I sell out. Okay. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. That's a normal um, uh, manager I was, agent rate. Well, I think five, 10%. That doesn't seem crazy. Where else am I going to go to promote? I'm not on any other shows. Right. And I right. don't have time to go to other shows because I write right. for him. Mm -hmm. But he still has a manager. And an right. But he also has yeah. a lot of cuts. So he's paying out 5 or 10% to Crowder and then probably between 5, 15, 5 10, 15% to his, to his actual agent. Yeah. Him and, right. and, his, and then has to pay his opener out of pocket. At this point, I'm now desperate to promote my shows because he won't do it. Okay. So you have me and Matt McClower. He's got a new daughter. We're going around the country and, and I'm watching ticket sales slide. And I'm, it's funny. Like I'm literally in malls, like for example, doing like a funny bone and I'm in like a comic book store and Matt and I are standing there and a guy would go, Hey, you're Dave Landau. And I go, yeah. He'd be like, what are you doing here? And I'm like, I'm performing at the funny bone upstairs. And he'd be like, really? You, you should mention your dates on your show. <gasps> yeah, I, they should. You're right. Wow. That, that must have been like a happened. knife in the heart. It would hurt, yeah, but I, yeah. I wouldn't tell them. I wouldn't go like, oh, it's because I'm not you know, allowed. I got the lights yeah, on. Yeah. Hmm. And at that point, I had already had my, you know, contract terminated. I could have said the truth, but I never. Was it did. terminated or did it resolve? Was it like had a, had a fixed date? Uh, no, it, it never had a fixed date. It was just they had said that it was it, that that was done, and you were I informed just, in, in, verbally or in writing that your contract yes. is hereby done. Okay. Yes, and it was I had to choose either a 1099 or uh, this new policy. Okay. And when Jeff asked me the choice, we were Buffalo mm -hmm. Wild Wings, and I said, um, I guess whichever one fits up his ass better. Would you like to order lunch? Because I was you, pretty fucking. Pissed. You said that. Yep. I gotta tell you, like <laughs> I know you fairly well at this point. We go. We, we've hung out one-on-one -on, -one on more than one occasion. Um, you're not uh, someone who's got a temper, to put it mildly. Yeah. Uh, you're very open about your past with recovery. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people who are addicts. Uh, Bridget Fetissey's husband, Jaron, just stayed with me. They're moving here. Uh, he's in recovery. Oh, um, and nice. as is she. And one of the things that's uh, commendable about addicts is addicts realize, I should be in a coffin. Or I should yeah. be in a gutter. So it takes a lot for to be like, you know what? This is unfair. This sucks. Because you guys have been through rock bottom. Isn't like, you know what? I got drunk and I was hungover. Mm -hmm. That's not rock bottom. That's the penthouse. That's <laughs> you the know what I mean? like, that's like, that's paradise. To oh, someone who's that. oh, no, I was just hungover. Poor me. Rock bottom is like, I'm crying at the, grandma's <laughs> crying at Thanksgiving dinner. And I don't care because I'm too effed up to realize. 
Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Rock bottom is in an X position handcuffed to a bed while they're dumping cold on your throat and your mother's crying. Yeah. Like that, and you know, that's not even rock bottom because once you get out, you still drink. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. The, the, and that's the part that I don't think he ever grasped was I was very, and I'm still very forgiving of him because whatever he has and whatever he's going through, I just think he was bullied at some point in his life and he's be, he has become the bully and he doesn't mm -hmm. realize it. And that's what sucks is he's, he's got a lot of yes men around him and I really do love his staff and I love working with them, but I think that they are kind of just a little bit intimidated at this point to keep their own job. I know I was, so I don't blame him. But it's just he, he there's just something there that I just don't grasp because I there is part of him that I know is good. I've met that person. But then he does stuff that's behind your back that's like this and you're like, why are you why are you doing this for power? And it's it's very it, and it's just not worth it to me. And and at this point in my life, I have hit rock bottom enough and I have been left with nothing enough that I'm just going to go, all right, well, that's enough. I'm just going to go fight Yeah, I, I know I'm what it's walk. like to have nothing and be destitute and I can do it. I've done it before. Yeah, I've, I can I can move on. I can go and you can, you know, he can, he can claim martyr and make stuff up and say I did whatever and I know the truth and I know the people around me that know the truth. And that's just, and I'm being, I'm being very, very generous here. What you so know, what happened when you said that line about he could sh uh, shove it up his ass? <laughs> Jeff said, I figured it would go probably a little something like this. And then we ordered lunch. And because okay. Jeff Jeff said uh specifically to me, he goes, I don't understand why he's so high strung like this, because he's not doing anything wrong. He just made me watch a full tape where he said he fell asleep, and I'm like, he didn't hmm. because he was always looking for that. And he said, he said, I don't understand because you're turning in everything he's asking you to turn in. He was kind of confused by it because he knew that it was this constant, like, but let him. me ask, let me ask this told that tardy clause. How mm -hmm. often were you late to work? Yeah, this is it. Yeah. Oh, like to the actual like show, like yeah. being started once. Once. Okay. He had me get a, an iPhone uh, and I got rid of my Android because I'm. I do stupid shit sometimes. I set it for uh, p.m. and not a.m. and I I was late to the show, but a, a lot of the times when I was supposed to be there at like eight, I'd be there at eight fifteen, or I'd be there at seven thirty, I'd be there at seven fifty. But it was again because I was writing, and then I had to get huh. ready to be on camera. It wasn't yeah. because of so any other never... reason. Sounds like he was twenty plus minutes late on multiple occasions. Yeah, because that was interesting. What he just said, he was like once once so completely i had to get a new phone because i set it for p.m instead of a.m and then like it sounds like I'm once he blatantly slept in slept through it slept through the alarm the alarm was fucked but then he was late other times but it was because he was preparing for the show so it's like well well that's also an interesting thing to say too though chrissy it's like i was late but it's okay because i was late because i was writing for the show Hmm. Yeah. It's tricky. And also, okay, the part where there is, it was making me laugh with the part where they were like, well, you're a recovering addict and, you know, you've gone through this thing that's like so, I don't know, that was a little bit strange. So difficult. What, you think like addicts should get special treatment? Yeah. So I, was, I don't know. It's like, uh, at the end of the day, it's all like a choice to stop drinking and stop doing those things. It's like, it's like saying I'm a suicide survivor. I'm a three time suicide <laughs> survivor, Chrissy. Did you know that? Three times, right. and you know, it's a miracle that I'm still here because I'm, I'm a survivor. <laughs> right, something you can't prove. Now, <laughs> in the Magnum Norse, this is exactly what the commies want. We're completely destroyed. Forking around really bummed me out when Crowder and Daily Wire had their spot, their spat. If Crowder joined them, I would have bought a subscription Daily Wire. Now I don't support both. Divide and conquer. Dun, dun, dun. Tyson R. Wait, women poop? No, I don't. Push-ups. Oh, yeah. Do you and Eric need different size toilet seats? Wow. Mm -hmm. We actually do. I, 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 my toilet seat's like this big. So I keep in here like that. <laughs> Magnum Norris. So Crowder, thank you for the super chat. Wow, thank you. Uh, so Crowder put the same despicable terms from Daily Wire onto Dave. 
Hmm. <sighs> That's tricky. Cloak and dagger. Did Dave even try to negotiate? Yeah, I've heard other people ask this too. Um, did Dave even try to negotiate any of this? Did he have a lawyer look at any of it? He said he did hire entertainment lawyers. Uh, or did he just go along with everything until he got screwed and then mad? Maybe. Maybe like it built up over time. Mercy, do you think Crowder will pull a Kevin Spacey and finally come out of the, oh my God, closet in an attempt to dodge a controversy? I don't think so. What's up, Nina? So what I'm getting for this from this is Crowder knew what a shitty contract from Daily Wire was because he because he was cause he was giving out shitty contracts. Me, God, I would hate to think that he created a shitty contract to push Dave away. But then again, I, I mean, also to me, it's like how sh how much money are we talking here for it to be shitty? You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't right, know. You're right. I don't how much are we talking I've about? I've dealt with shitty for very little money, so. I mean, yeah. Chris, you and I have both performed at places where we got paid in pizza. Yep. Yeah, and not and even good pizza. Ticket. Yeah. Magnum Norris, Crowder, and Dave being done is rock bottom. We're done. Oh, no, don't be sad. Current event nerd. Thanks, Chrissy, for your awesomeness. Once was for the on-air portion of the show, but he was late to working hours more often. Oh. So it sounds like he was used to working and writing whenever he choose, whenever he chose. It seems like he would write when he wanted for his stand up. And then when he did Anthony Cumia's show, you just come on and riff for two hours and have a great time. Anthony never required him to come in and like have writing hours together. Cause but also Anthony's show like never had sketches. Um, it didn't have, it, you know, Crowder is much bigger. So it just was, it sounds like it was just sucking up way more of his time that he would spend on stand up or just free, free time in general. You were never late on camera. No, not other than once. Okay. Well, no, you, with, only once. Okay. Only once. Wow. Okay. Because that, if you have a clause like that, it's kind of it would imply to me that this is an ongoing problem, and we need to nip it in the bud. Wait. Yeah. So this, this so-called tardy policy. Hmm. Um, do you know if this is something that other people had to deal with, or was this something exclusive to your contract, to your best of your knowledge? Oh no, it was just me. I mean, I. It was just me. It was odd because I wasn't allowed in rehearsal. Mm -hmm. So there would be a rehearsal and like they would over everything, but I wasn't allowed in it. So I would have to sit in a separate boardroom with uh, John who works there and just wait for 45 minutes kind of arbitrarily. Every day? While, yeah. Well, they did rehearsal for no reason, just because it was sort of an aspect of control while they did a rehearsal. And Just I wasn't wanted him the there. Room. And, and my, my agent did fight, Steven's agent did fight to kind of, uh, you know, get me in the room. Still never happened. Then I, Wait, what, I and what, what's the upside of not having the co host during the rehearsals to make the, his comments fresher? Uh, yeah, I think so. He knew the jokes and where he could go quicker. You know, wait, but, oh, wait but why wouldn't you want the co host to also know the jokes so you could have to go? I don't understand this. I'm trying I guess to guess you would seem funnier because you knew the topics better. I mean, even though I did know the topics because I was writing them into the show. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, but I guess it was just he I don't know. I just was not allowed in the room. You would have a given reason mm -hmm. is my point. Not really, no. Okay. So okay. I would have to rush there to do nothing. So I would be okay. playing with his dog. Oh, well, that's okay. That. That's Every day. Fun. That's so I come in two hours early to play with a dog. <laughs> they, they probably have like coffee and free snacks and stuff too. Yeah, I would love that. I would. I think it sounds like he just wanted him to be in the building. Like, okay, he's here. I don't have to worry. You know what I mean? Like, it's good to get there early, and then you can. I mean, you can write whatever. He could probably write his stand up if he was there early. Work on a bunch of other stuff. Um. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Have snacks. Have coffee. Play with the dog. Yeah, I mean, I get. There's so many times I'm in between things and I'm just hanging out. I'll go to a Sephora. Fuck yeah, I'll go to a Sephora for an hour and waste time. Like I love wasting time. I like getting somewhere. Like you know, we like to get to a venue early. Same thing with Keanu. You get to a venue early and you have time to just. We have two hours. Kind of feel the play. vibe, you know. Mm -hmm. Have maybe yeah. have a little 
drinky. This sounds like just a personality clash. And almost like when you have a breakup, like every little thing they do starts to annoy the fuck out of you. That's that seems like where Dave was at. Yeah. But it's tricky when your job and your main source of income, also a comedy job, is also linked in with your stand up. So how you long feel was like he, how long was he with him? I think since 21. So maybe two years, which is not that long. No. And they're at the blaze. Uh yeah. Loud with Crowder. I think it was under the Blaze um, umbrella, but they didn't shoot in the main studio. I think they had their own different studio somewhere. Oh. Yeah. Oh, all right. Let's see what else is on this. Or I was to write something last minute, which uh wasn't very often. Okay. Because I had already written it the night before or that morning okay um what so this is what august you're saying uh well august and then october was when this other contract came in i i i said i'm not just going to have some deal where it's you know a non uh not a non-disclosure but a uh non-negotiable thing i'm like that's just sorry no so i got the entertainment lawyer filled it out like i said through this i don't understand that whole thing about telling you where your family has to live in I think that's yeah, kind of really, that that to me sounds really um, uh, egregious. Well, especially when one's sick and needs their own insurance and might have a job that covers that, and they know it. Did did um, did you feel that was just like a twisting of the knife thing? Yeah. Hmm. That just I, I, okay. I, I, I felt I it was very personal. Real, okay. I mean, that's why it's like hard to even get into like when it still seem like a little jovial because it's like yeah, it's pretty mm. shitty. Yeah. So he, why so wouldn't you want your you family to live closer like, to, to you, be... though? That's the part I don't. I Wait. would. I couldn't. I wouldn't be able to stand to live states apart from Frank. But I guess that was the dynamic he had set up, like from when he was in New York. They lived in Detroit, and he was just like I personally couldn't stand to be away from them that long. But you would think that having your family move to the state that you're in would be like a good thing. And are they paying for the move? Right. Because that's also another factor. If they're paying for the move, that's oh, it's kind of yeah. Cool. Flights, that's great. moving your shit, yeah. yeah. Hmm. So many questions remain. JD, I like Crowder, but his treatment of Dave says a lot. It does seem like Crowder was changed by early childhood movie scene, but hopefully overall good. Uh, Travis Schiffer. So as a vet, you can lose everything and not give a poop because you can be lower. Plus, Steve had how many heart attacks? Oh. So maybe he's just someone who is better not working with someone else. You know? Yeah. Uh, Lawrence Stevens. Love Lava Crowder. Love Dave. Always knew Steven was worse than Tim Pool as to narcissistic issues when Ladder with Crowder lost Dave. Now we know. Oh. Magnum Norris, can we just love each other? Yeah, let's just love each other. Nero Garcia, no. people view infighting on the right as always a bad thing, but swords are only forged in fire, and the right wing does not hive mind. I don't think people should confuse this with infighting. This sounds like a, a personality and work conflict. I don't think Dave has ever once had an ideological conflict with Crowder or they disagreed politically or on you know important values or anything like that I think it's just like oh it, he was hard to work with and work for then from push-ups thanks I've heard that Lila has a huge heart for such a small frame well you're really going hard on her tonight push-ups I'm gonna yes. have to block you live with Aaron Crowder's attempt at starting fake drama with Daily Wire blew up in his face and now Dave is spilling the tea Steven isn't half as funny as he perceives himself. Thanks for the play-by-play, -play, beautiful ladies. Oh, thank you. And thank you, Truck, for $4.99 and just no comments. We like the men silent. <laughs> Here seven days a week, except for possibly a Saturday every six. And I would say that. I would go, you said I could leave one Saturday every six weeks. And it's like, where does it say that, Dave? And it's like, just because you change the verbiage doesn't mean it doesn't say that. Right. Right. Yeah, and it's it's. Had you been okay? Let's look at it this way. Had you been promising him that you're going to move your family to Dallas? 
if things had and that never happened if things had worked they broke up a bit if things had uh, if things had worked out okay mm -hmm. i said that well, wasn't it working out for years for that okay and if things in you know it would be in my personal life and whatever but i no, think that like if i got a new job like he had to move from new york to texas for this job i would be like oh this is a big move for me i wouldn't wait two years before moving my family down i'd be like oh you're moving down like in the next what six months or something like i but everyone's different i guess yeah. Wasn't uh, that would have never been my choice? Well, it's not his business. No, quite literally, it's not like your wife or your kid or whoever, your uncle or your grandpa are helping you, driving you to work or, or writing skits with you. I've seen no. some of your kids' comedy skits; they're not funny. Like <laughs> well, his drawing is crap. He tries, um, but like, okay, not everything. Better. Not everything's he, a knock knock joke. He has a hook, Mike. <laughs> yeah, for a hand. <laughs> Yeah, there's um, a, but like with Anthony, I was with Anthony for three years. Yeah, there was never even a mention. Yeah, I mean, I, when Anthony, mm -hmm. people can say whatever the hell they want about him. When if there was any issue with my family, it wasn't even with any family member. It wasn't even discussed in a way of like, well, let's talk about this. Can you stay yeah. here until 10 p.m. and then maybe take a red eye to the funeral? He never made it. It was sense. always like, oh, what are you? Why are you here? Like yeah, it wasn't, yeah. it, there wasn't even, there was never even a thought in Anthony's head that anything should be more important than that. Um, yeah. Okay. So what, when did the whole thing with Daily Wire happen and what was your, that's kind of what happened with me was just before the break. Um, what was the break? The break was winter break, um, okay. right after he does his, uh, like Santa thing. Okay. Um, where. Like we went out for a minute and like I was dressed as an elf and I felt a bit degraded. And uh, so I only like, I, oh, I I think I, you've, you've I, been I, in we filmed interesting. a couple things. <laughs> like we had some visa cards and I was asking people questions and then I just started handing them to people that didn't speak the language. And then, um, cause I figured he'd, he'd never show that. Um, so I, um, right before the break, I was in his office and it was me, him and John and, he had a conversation with me that he wanted to put out my special and he was mad that I came to him because I had, I had edited the special and I wanted to put it out. So you filmed it without him in the interim? I, uh, I filmed a new one later without him okay. because he wanted this one and I didn't want him to put it out. The one that became a prison 10. Uh, yes. So the okay. original one was in Dallas and I didn't want him to put it out because he just thought it was his. Yeah. Mm. And it wasn't. This is my life story. I mean, there's yeah. stuff in mm. there about, you know, my dad's death, my mom's suicide. Like there's stuff in there that's so personal to me. So it's like, this isn't yours. So oh, he brought wow. me into his office and he said how he wished that he made the amount of money that I did last year and all this other stuff. And Wait, it was what? Like, said that or intimated to that? What? Yes. How? Wait, he was implying that you made more money than him, or significantly more money than him. Way more money than what? him. What? Okay. How? And I sat there That's like, possible. and I believed it for a minute. I was like, I don't know what this guy must be paying doesn't, these employees or what he, you know. Doesn't he own him? And I, I kind of said, they're not cheap. <laughs> no, no, they're not. I, they're China's very expensive for the American Patriot Holy mug. Crap. And uh, I, I he, he told me, you saying that to me and i and i kind of sat there like thinking like i i mean i did well but it's like let's be real here like it's not like that hmm. and i i it, but it was really what is odd, well it was like John yeah what, 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 what that. is that like, i want to know you, you you made closer to fuck me money than fuck you money yes <laughs> and uh and I kept mm -hmm. thinking, like, it's like you didn't make 70% of the tour, um, but you know, somehow that adds into me making more. Um, yeah. but you know, and I know I didn't know, but I didn't know even the kind of money that came in, I didn't know the real YouTube thing, I didn't realize, nor, nor was it your business, right? That's fair. No, I never asked, yeah. it was none yeah, of my business. Your business. Yeah, it's his and, show. Yeah. and look, he created that empire, it's his money, yes. it's his show. I, I never, yep. and everything that I agreed to, I agreed to. That's yes. the truth. So I totally, I never complained because that's what I agreed to. Right. So 
yeah, like the only thing I did complain about was like you said you would promote my shows and you didn't, and that pissed me off. Okay. So that, but then I we were on Christmas break and I didn't know what we were gonna do. I didn't know if we were going to the Daily mm-hmm. Wire or staying with the Blaze or whatever this whole controversy is. And then all of a sudden he's there talking about a contract for fifty million. Now he didn't out the Daily Wire. He just said it was a contract for fifty million and said it was somebody. It right. was pretty mm-hmm. obvious who it was, but in his defense, he didn't out them. But then Jeremy came out and outed it too. Jeremy, the head of this Daily Wire. Right. And I saw it and I thought, $50 million. You know, and I like looked at and it. And he turned down it, $50 million, Let's be clear. <laughs> or, uh, the, I think $50 million was the ceiling. Any like, million is a 50, lot. Yeah, he, he, yes. For $50 million, <laughs> Ben Shapiro can have my foot. Oh, for fifty million, I couldn't even believe it. But it's also going. It hit me too, though, because that means, oh, what are we worth? That I just sat in an office, yeah, and was shamed. The timeline met up to back in August that he first got this fifty million dollar offer okay. through my agent that I introduced him to. Oh right, yeah. yeah. Was at the same time that he knew what was going on in my personal life that he decided to slide me a contract that said you have to do all this. Yeah. When he was being offered fifty million, yeah, people are saying how much it costs to run the studio and everything else. It's like, mm. so the way that I looked at it, I it's was not like, challenger. Yeah, let's not. Right. What? Well, what is it, his overhead? Not making, it's not fifty million. Yeah. Hell, he's making a ton of money, which I'm not saying he doesn't deserve, but it's like at the same time, you. Uh, it seems like there was a lot of stress going on with Crowder. Seems like this was a very big, complicated deal that was like going back and forth with the Daily Wire. Again, we don't know what his overhead was. It sounds like he had to pay all his all of his employees. Like maybe he got paid directly from the Blaze. I also remember what were the issues he had with the Blaze. He didn't um, get to keep his subscribers or something like that, or get the list from Blaze. I don't know. I don't know if that's wrong, but I mean, anybody who's a fan of. Crowder was looking to see where he was going to end up and would seek him out. Um, it just seemed like maybe Crowder had a lot that he had to deal with and handle. And I wonder if this contract with Dave was like trying to like firm him up while all this crazy shit was going on. I don't know. It's hard to sort through. It's so, it's so easy after the fact, after you like break up with somebody to like go scorched earth and be like, I fucking hated everything about them. Everything was horrible. Yeah. Um, start with somebody you're excited it's the biggest opportunity i mean it was worth leaving compound media for us, so it must have been like pretty it must have been better money and a bigger opportunity a bigger audience more exposure it's hard and then and then at some point it does get to be like he said she said and then people people already feel how they feel about crowder if they if the daily wire thing kind of made them feel a certain way Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. All these people are making so much more money than I know. Like, it's like, yeah, I feel like speaking Chinese, and I'm just like, well, I am like here with the translator, like, like it's just I'm so not even at the place. So where... funny, I, mean, I mean, in defense of Stephen Crowder, it's like fifty million is really like not that much money. Like, who's why shouldn't he? Sh- he should be making a billion. I mean, Elon Musk is like makes billions. Why so can't see them? That's true. He has a fuck ton of followers. He probably has a fuck ton of overhead insurance, whatever your agents get, whatever taxes take out. Hmm. Gosh, it's hard. I don't know. I don't know either of them super closely. I know Dave better. I don't know Crowder at all. But yeah. I also think what it's not even it's not necessarily just about the money. I think that Dave didn't feel like respected or like felt like he was treated um, like an equal, you know? Yeah. Especially when it seems like this stand up tour was something they went in as equals, even though yeah. people can debate like, oh, Dave's a better stand up, whatever. But it's like when you go on tour with somebody, it's like the, you're with them, you're in that together. It's not like boss employee. And even that, he's, he went on. He's coming from the dynamic of Anthony. He's like second chair. His his right wing guy. You're right there. You have equal banter time, equal importance of opinion. You know that you're not telling the other person to be quiet and let the other one rant. And then he goes in with Crowder, and it feels like this. Yeah. And stand up, which is definitely more his wheelhouse and forte. 
well now and now it also feels like this in the stand-up which is the area that he is has more experience in so he probably felt like wow i'm not even in charge of my own career like in stand-up or on this podcast but you're probably yeah. going oh how much money is it how 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 long can i wait this out is it gonna get better I think these are good problems to have. Like, Dave is going to be fine. Like, the fact that he was even given a chance to be on Crowder and be exposed to that audience, this is all positive. Like, nothing is forever. Nothing is guaranteed. Like, we are in the generation of, like, you are not guaranteed any job for any period of time. Like, be grateful for any amount of time that you can spend doing anything that's going to help your career. So, And I, and I also feel like it's one of those things, too, where, um, you know, it, 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 there's a lot of up and down in, in this, in this industry where it's like, okay, it might look like bad for a person right now, but like things can change in a day and then it can go back up and then, oh, this person that's up can be down here. And it's just really, it's just about staying relevant, you know? Mm -hmm. And so either way, it's good for both of them because we're talking about them. So this is fantastic. <laughs> I mean, my God, they, they've, got yeah. like they've made it. I mean, if you're at the place where me and Lila are talking about you, like you've hit the big time. <laughs> I mean, I feel like you know what, Gracie. This is this. I think we're learning a lot here. Okay, maybe we should, yeah. maybe we should be a little bit more demanding of things. You know? Yeah. Hit the like button. Subscribe. Yeah. So, what are you doing? Be, like, how many people are in here? There should be a thousand likes on this. Yeah. Like, like button. By the right way, now. this whole conversation is being recorded, Lila. Okay, so I'm just <laughs> I'm not gonna let you get away with shit. Okay. I will. I will repost this later. I will repost the audio version on on spotify later okay push-ups that was supposed to be a compliment oh push-ups keith therian thanks for the super chat pat meadows dave said his family member needed health insurance okay yeah maybe it's more complicated i would think that like being closer would be more helpful but 200 watt studio lila is so gorgeous a lot of charisma no simp really sounds like a simp to me that's okay you could simp simp Watch away on sunday can we destigmatize simping once and for all? Glenn Close fatal instinct vibes with Crowder. Do you mean fatal attraction? Uh, Rife technology. Wow. Thank you for the pink boy. Crowder still has Svet the robot and not gay Jared under an NDA, but Crowder sabotaged job offers wouldn't allow them on other channels and many other things I can't even say on here. We should get Crowder to release them from the NDA. I mean, this is not uncommon. Like, I've tried to get people that work on Fox to do appearances on my show, and that's not the most, you know. I mean, Fox does a thing where they don't let people go on other shows. So, Chrissy, what if Dave and Steven are actually like still friends and they just created this controversy <gasps> and have this like whole, I mean, this is politics. Who knows? I don't even know what to believe anymore. Okay. Wow. Like, let's organize a, a split, like a breakup. I don't know. It sounded like Steven needed Dave for the stand-up piece. And at first, Dave needed Crowder for his show and his exposure. But then eventually, like, everyone who's going to be a fan of Dave from Crowder is already a fan of Dave. And they're probably not going anywhere because they like him. Yeah. I don't know. I think that there's, like, a lot of... They they got stuff from each other. They got, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, so it was, like, kind of an equal exchange here. And now look at Dave. Dave's gonna be great. He has a new He's show. Yeah. Talking about him. You should yeah. have him on your show. You Thank should you go on him. his show. Yeah. You know, all just go on each other's shows. This is great. And then keep doing stand up. It's fun. Is, is there anything else interesting in this? I knew that you were making a profit, and I was working very hard to help you. Very true. It just came off as more of what I had experienced. No, no, no. It was uh, no, no, no. It was. It was. It was a worse offer than you had originally shoes yes. but at the same time it was a joke because it's it, it, but so many people i realized are stupid and listen <laughs> to some ungodly amount of money and go he said it's not about the money and that's what that's the truth and it's like are you fuck, how stupid are you of course but here's the other the thing it's not about deal. the money mm -hmm. I, what in i didn't see anything in those daily wire terms that were particularly offensive they weren't like move your family change your name uh you have to you had to advocate for gun control or you have to endorse Biden. <laughs> you know what funny. I mean? Like, I don't think no. anything in that contract was at all offensive from what I'd seen of it. 
No, I don't think that they did. And that's what my problem was with it. And I don't know anybody at the Daily Wire. The only reason why I know anybody at the Daily Wire is because they were friends with them. Okay, yeah. And that's what bothered me about it so much was I was like, why would you do that? Folks, your welcome is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. No, in not Progressive. They didn't do here. shit for me. Yeah. And to call it slave wages <laughs> when you buy clothing and mugs from slave wage countries where children Uh-oh. make shit and you're saying you're a patriot like that bothers me because of the Uh-oh. hypocrisy but that's is what it is they don't have I guess their I'm mugs made in the u.s at this point saying something like that but it bothered me because i would never record my friend and play uh, it on the air okay thing runs on hypocrisy and drama Let's blah 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 they would fire <laughs> three people if i didn't take it down you were told this on the phone or in writing in that moment i'm losing people interest we're like you should put up the contracts you have Things with medication. I know I've had my own issues. Like it's done. I don't. I cannot be part of that anymore. After you know how I was treated, I'm happy to go. I just mm. don't want to do it. Done. Mm, okay. Let's. Was wasn't there some miscommunication about your last days on the show publicly? Yes. Can we talk about that briefly? Yes. Well, it was the the jury duty thing, wasn't that the? Well, did yeah. They say you're coming back. They did say I was coming back because I did say I would come back and do those days as long as I didn't have to go back for that reason. Okay. And they sent me an NDA to sign and I'm, and uh, with a money amount. I turned it down. I said, I'm not going to sign an NDA. That goes against everything that your show stands for. Yeah. Non-disclosure um, agreement for people who don't know what that is. Yeah. Yes. He sent me a gift uh, to help for getting him to rumble. No strings attached. Uh, very nice. But what uh, was it? I, I, I <laughs> was it an edible arrangement? Um, was it a basket? But it was uh, a it was still where, <laughs> and which I appreciate. You know, it was nice. Um, Sounds like mo- is money. After that, it's like this it's a money amount. It's just done. That car? I, I, I was not going to sign anything. I was not going to say that I'm not going to ever defend myself or say there was a reason that I didn't leave or take or just say that, you know, I deserved it or the reality the was. was. In the last year, I was treated in a way that I did not deserve to be treated. And regardless of any amount of money that people think or thought that I made, it was not worth it. Mm. And I appreciate every fan that came out to every show. And I really do appreciate deeply the fan base that Steven got me. But it just, by the end of it, the gaslighting and the, it it just, Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm glad to be done. And and I'm and that's about it, you know. And the confusion came to a lot of people that called them a liar about jury duty. Stephen wasn't lying; that was the truth. It's just they didn't have me back on after that because they were very upset that 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 I chose jury duty. But that sorry, you have to do jury duty. Worked, and then I think he felt embarrassed that I didn't show up after he said I'd show up. And that is uh, pretty much how I'm pretty. I got ghosted or whatever this thing's been. But I don't want to ignore the fans anymore. And every day I get, when are you coming back? When are you coming back? I I'm not. So. When was wow. the last time you spoke with him? Oh. Uh, maybe two months ago, month and a half. Oh. What, what was that conversation like? He texted me and said, "I'm glad you're going to come back to do a show." <laughs> I said, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And he said, I have your Christmas present in my garage. <gasps> it was and a car. Like, it was a car. I, I, uh, what do you say? Um, Unless he keeps I, his money in the garage. He said, it's very heavy. I said, I hope it's a panda. He said, I don't trust animals that don't fuck. And I said something like, I'll fuck it. And that was it. And that I think that was the last time we spoke. <gasps> um, oh. What would you say to him if you saw him? In a room, if you're in a room with him right now, um, I love you. Sorry that it didn't work out. I think we actually made a really good team. Okay, are you expecting him to call you screaming and flipping his shit? No, I'm expecting him more or less to martyr it or ignore it. Okay, hmm. um, let's end on a positive note. Okay, I feel talk, bad now. Talk a little bit more. Uh, tell us more about what plans bad. you have for your show on the Blaze. Yeah, um, I'm really glad that this happened and you landed at such an awesome place. Thank you, and d- thank you for letting me talk about it because there's very few people I would really want to bring Aww. this up to, and uh, I'm very happy about you it. It's uh, me, Quarter Black, and a few other people that uh, um, have been working together. My friend Ken. 
uh, as well as Matt McClowry, who uh, oh. Bryce, who put together. Is Matt like uh, moving to Dallas? Are you guys filming in Dallas? He is going to be doing writing from Florida for okay. uh, for the Blaze. Okay. And cool. uh, I will fly him out, of course, to be in sketches and that sort of nice. thing. Nice. Uh, but we will be. How can someone who has no human emotion act in a sketch? <laughs> it will be difficult. Well, is he going to be lurch in every episode? <laughs> yes. Well, now that he has a daughter, I think he's Aww. dextering it a bit, where he's oh, pretending okay. to be human. It's something. So I think he acts every day. It's it's so weird. Like he honestly, he actually, I've never seen him love anything for real. Okay. Like he can actually hold something without killing it. Oh, <laughs> it's astonishing. God bless. Knock on wood. I know, right? That's true. I shouldn't put the card before you, the, horse, nice the, the hearse. <laughs> um, yeah. He. Uh, so he's. Uh, he, and he's such a. He's such a precise writer, which is what I love about him. And it's because of the the goofballs. Autism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it's going to be a bit of. Uh, it's going to obviously have a political edge to it because everything does now i think it's almost impossible not to and especially will, plays, yeah yeah of course and but we will have more of a pop culture side to it uh doing a few fresher things that, that, that they're not doing and also working in other people at the blaze to be in sketches that we've Great, already yeah. started to do can you um, promise me to keep the dylan mulvaney references to an absolute minimum yes <laughs> thank you yes we did we did i've been informed by my producer that only 33% of live viewers right now are not subscribed to the channel. Only? Wait, 33% of live viewers right now are not. Wait, I can't read what you wrote. <laughs> They're not subscribed. Tell them to subscribe. Subscribe. Yes, yeah, subscribe, y'all. Hit subscribe that like button. Channel. Hit it. Hit it. Chrissy to 100 Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Sleep on it. And if you wake up tomorrow morning, you made a, you know, I made a horrible mistake. You can come back, unlike, unsubscribe, but just for a night, see how you feel. And if uh, you are subscribed, let us know in the comments that you are subscribed. Yeah. I'm really, really excited for this show. I am really happy that The Blaze is um, bringing more comedy to their network. Uh, I think all of these alternate networks should be doing that. Uh, but I get it. They don't, you know, they don't want somebody to yell out the N word and <laughs> get canceled. But uh, let's see here. Is this their little teaser? Yes. I'd like to thank you all for coming. Uh, if you're interested <laughs> in some nourishment, we do have some vegan baked cookies and some ethically sourced fair trade coffee. You're welcome to it. That's complimentary. If you could follow the rules, please do wear your mask unless you're talking, uh, eating, breathing. Uh, or doing really anything with your mouth at all, or you just don't want to wear it, just leave it haphazardly dangling <laughs> from your ear or under your chin. Yeah, I wonder if it's going to be just a collection of sketches. Like, I wonder how the format is going to go. If it's going to be like talking to camera, like Alex's show, and then breaks in between for sketches. I'll be interested to see how they format. Are they trying to do like an SNL type thing? Uh, almost like every time I hear SNL, I, I cringe and like my body wants to crumple up. It's like, I hope no show is trying to be like SNL at this point. Maybe old like school. Old school SNL. Yeah. Let's hire a bunch of gays who all have the same ideas and do a show about to it. To make <laughs> others comfortable because we live in a time of, of fear. Yes. <laughs> that he gives her... Oh, let's just play music. You oh, this is about the You need to check your white privilege. This almost reminds me of black a Black Mirror sketch. Like, where it's real life. That's cute. We've all seen this. Oh, this is a quarter black. Who's low-key hilarious. I'm glad that he's going to be getting more funny screen time. <laughs> Oh, this is when they have to come out as when they did, when they when they like figure out what their kid is straight. My son came out to me today. <laughs> He's straight. Yep. It's bad enough that we're the whitest family in town. <laughs> now this? Are you sure? It's a confusing time. I remember being that age. Everybody's talking behind our backs and like basically canceled. Just, I, I don't. I 
I guess he's not going to go to college. Isn't he a cheerleader, though? Yeah. <laughs> a damn good one, too. But he told me he did it to meet chicks. Oh, no. <laughs> it's all right, man. Stop. <sighs> Oh, <laughs> they're great. I can't wait. I can't wait to see what they do. Is Quarter Black a stand up? No, he. What is his like? I think he's more of a writer. He was like, I think, a on camera booth producer person for Crowder. And then now he works with Gary on Nerd Rotic. Same thing, like producing, but is also like panel, panel member, talking head person. Um, but no, he doesn't do stand up. But he's hilarious and a good writer. Uh, let me blow through some of these. Yes, Fatal Attraction, not the Leslie Nielsen comedy. Rife technology. I'm not a comedian at all, but will you open for me if I promise to let you close with any joke you want? I'll think about it. Fat naked Jimmy Neutron. When Matt Walsh's stuff was leaked, there were calls and texts from Crowder. Crowder claims to never have talked with Walsh. Maybe all of these feuds are fake. Oh my God. Talking about. That would be so stupid. I would feel so like used. Well, okay. Not like, used. But, like, you have to think about it. Like, Chrissy, it's kind of brilliant. You know, it is. Start, everyone's start, promoting each other. Yeah, people are promoting, people are talking about it. It's, it's kind of a way. If there's anything I, I've learned about being on Twitter this last like couple of years, because here's what's when I started my stand up comedy career, like I wasn't really using Twitter until I moved to Texas. And like it took me about a year to really understand just like Twitter comedy, you know? And so mm -hmm. it's very interesting how people like internet trolls are like, it's kind of that's considered comedy in the uh, Twitter world where it's like, as a comedian, I kind of take stuff as like, because when we were on stage, it's like, for me, it's like I'm trying to I, I make my comedy about truth. But sometimes online, people are just straight up just saying blatant lies. But that's not really who they are. I don't know. It's very confusing. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is I think that maybe some of these feuds really are just a way to get people to make videos about it. And we're falling right into the trap. We got sucked in. <laughs> Ila, let's plan a feud. Oh let's gosh, let's, plan, so let's plan a dramatic fight for we're in Vegas. Mm -hmm. Like spill my drink or something. I don't know. I don't know. And you sh and then you should like knock me over. Yeah. Just tell me like the workouts aren't paying off quick enough and then we'll get into a huge fight. Well, now, but you guys know, but just don't tell anybody so that it's like, yeah, a don't tell anybody, group. but make sure you like, like, and subscribe and share. Like and subscribe, like, please. Make videos about it for us. <laughs> so, yeah. Do constant EFAPs about this fight. Midnight Mike show loved Chrissy along, loved past tense. <laughs> From Dabbler to Who Are These Podcasts to Kumia. But Perry put me over the top. Long live Chrissy Mary. Oh, thanks. Love Perry Carabao. He's fun. Uh, Rife Technology. The gift was a car. <gasps> I mean, if you gave me a car, like, you could put it anywhere. <laughs> That's crazy. What kind of car? That's fucking cool. Wow. That's I think the best gift I got from a boss was a bottle of perfume that I convinced him to get because I said it was only made in Italy. Oh or my where God. Was he he, no, France. Um, he was in France on a business trip and I was like, oh, wow, there's this perfume I really want, but it's only made in France. And look, it's walking distance from your hotel. And I printed out like the map. To the, and I never, ever do shit like that. But I just was like, like really wanted it and it was like a 350 dollar bottle of perfume and then he got it and, and gave it to me which was like wow i put up with like three more years of abuse for that not even abuse but what um one time uh i got laid off like a month before christmas and they still invited me to the company christmas party because we were going to take uh, a weekend trip to Vegas and they didn't think I would actually say yes. They laid off four people and I was the only one that was like, I'm going to still go to the company Christmas party. Like, why wouldn't I take the trip to Vegas? And I hung out with my boss in Vegas and I was more relaxed. And uh, in the middle of the trip, she was like, this is the Lila. I, I, you should have shown me like, where was this Lila when, you know, you were working for me. And I was like, you could still like keep me like if this is right. not anyways. You're like George who kept showing up for work after he quit. 
<laughs> no. Two hundred watts studio. Frankly, the Crowder show was better when Dave guest hosted. Zato. So geed. Thanks for the super chat. And lastly, from Rex Mark, off topic, but I haven't showered for two weeks. Whoa. Either you're Asian and don't smell, or you really smell and you need to stop what you're doing right now, sir, and go shower. What's wrong with you that you're not showering for two weeks? What's the longest you've gone without showering? <sighs> Maybe like four days or something. I don't know. But not recently. Like, it must have been. No, I, I think it's. Once you go into that. Okay, let's say I showered last night. And then I went all day today without showering. That's fine. Unless you've worked out. If I go into all day the next day, that's something's wrong. <laughs> I think to go two full days without showering, either you're not working out enough, you're not moving enough to get stinky, or like you're depressed. Mm. Summer of 2007, I didn't shower for seven days. Ah! I just wanted to see like um, how greasy my hair could get. <laughs> <laughs> like a contest well this was like the summer before i had a car too so i wasn't driving yet and like me and my friends did it together it was like we just wanted to see how greasy your hair could get it was really kind of there bizarre. are some days if you're just still <laughs> you know like you don't make any sudden moves you might not sweat we at all break, so we were like we were showering we were just like okay. in the lake. but yeah it was pretty disgusting yeah you're doing mexican showers Pat Meadows, whatever happened with Bonnie McFarland? I have, I have no idea. Is she not? I think she's still around doing comedy. She's married to Rich Foss. Uh, Putin Toot. I'm so mad I won't be here in Vegas next week. I'll stalk you guys another time. Can we please have a Lila read story hour? I love Lila's voice. Me too. Thanks. Chrissy, do you remember this book that we got from our friend Chris Gore? Ah, <gasps> uh, Yes. <laughs> This is the one of my favorite little boot little books. Yeah, it's about poop. Yeah. This is oh, like Oh yeah, remember somebody asked us about poop. Look, we have a whole book on poops. Yeah. And look, he signed he signed it. Christy, you rock from one Chris to another. Lila, you're the best. Wait, Lila, you're the greatest? Greatest. Sk skankiest? Yep. Your Chris honesty washes the world. Is that You're, what it says? What does it say? You're so nasty. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what is it say? You nasty. Oh my, it didn't say you're so nasty. <laughs> you're so nasty inspires the world. Wait, wait, no, your honesty inspires oh, the world. You're so nasty. <laughs> Imagine like I never really read this. He said, you so nasty. <laughs> okay, good. That's nice. I love yeah, it. Yeah, that was nice. Imagine I'd be like, I would think differently of Chris Girl. I'm like, damn, he's signing books honestly. Yeah, I'm going to do a story time and read the book sometime. Yeah, that's a great idea. James Shart, if you want to know how to do fake YouTube drama right, look up Brandon Herrera, AK guy, Kentucky Ballistics and Demolition Ranch did. It ended with Brandon getting chased by a tank. Hilarious. Uh, I feel like to do that, you have to like be good at lying. I don't know. I feel like people can tell. I don't know. That sounds. That seems just like a weird waste of time. Two hundred watt studio. You cannot shower, but on the second day, at least sponge bath the bad parts. Yeah, my mom would do cat baths where she. I don't know why she wouldn't just shower. She would fill up the sink in the bathroom and then just be like. <laughs> I washed myself with a red on a stick. And then and then she wouldn't like immediately wash the washcloth. She would like hang the washcloth over the like the bathroom towel. And then I feel like the essence of the washcloth would fill up the bathroom. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's funny. You walking like ah <laughs> Somebody got a fish in here. Oh <laughs> Just kidding. Love you, mom. Eh, we're having fun. Lila, where's your documentary trailer? Where can I where can I play that from? On um, Twitter. Am I gonna get dinged for that? Mm. 
special that they Okay. Use. Yeah, I don't think you will. Ding, 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 ding. I put it on my Instagram too and I didn't. Oh, there. Yes, there it is. From the creators of Immune to the System. I'm going to do my Lila voice. My Lila documentary voice. Wait, let me do my life. Andrew Wakefield's medical license was revoked to protect the public from his unethical experiments. Charged with falsifying data, harming participants, and fraud. Our film intends to make the same case for Dr. Anthony Fauci. And if you vaccinate someone who's not infected and you have an effective vaccine, when they get exposed, they won't be infected. But the ones that you absolutely are not going to convince, you need to put some pressure on. Many of us use fetal tissues for cell lines, but also there will be a surprise outbreak. Needing to learn from people that I never thought I would be learning things from, namely bioweaponers. The next pandemic, and there will be one, there will absolutely be an outbreak of another pandemic. Additionally under judgment, the vaccine platform mRNA, the origins of COVID-19, the concept of gene editing, and the spike protein. And you're all familiar with the DNA vaccine, probably gonna be replaced by mRNA soon, but by using the power of DNA, recombinant DNA technology, well, you, you could talk about the development of vaccine. Does the vaccine make you worse? <laughs> and there are diseases in which you vaccinate someone, they get infected with what you're trying to protect them with, and you actually enhance the infection. I wanted to pick out the one cell that if I damage that cell, I would do the most damage to the immune system. I, as an immunologist, would pick out the T4 cell. That retroviruses in a more attenuated form are the major vehicles for gene therapy. So it really is gene therapy, unfortunately, it's destruction and not therapy. In the topic for today, which is gain of function research on highly pathogenic avian influenza H5N1. The trial of Anthony Fauci, July 4th, 2023. The idea came from a physician scientist in the UK years ago who did a study saying that there was a connection between the measles vaccine and autism. And as it turned out, not only was the data incorrect, it was fabricated and false. And for that, that person has been disbarred from practicing medicine. Wow. Dun, dun, dun. Important Our was made by our friend Cool School. Ooh. Cool in LA. He made that Fauci art. And he looks so Did pretty. you have to like, did you do like rock, paper, scissors between you and Eric to see who was going to do the voiceover? Uh, no. It was going to be me because. Because <laughs> <laughs> Ed's a better voice. <laughs> Well, you know what? Eric um, is the researcher, the ed, like the main editor. I come in and I'm like, okay, move this. I don't like that. Okay, that's a second too long. Okay, I like this. Louder here, quieter here. You're the tweaker. Yeah. yeah I mean, I'm Eric is the brains of the project. I'm the beauty. You know, I wasn't going to say that. I was thinking that, though. Yeah, I'm his muse. Aw, you're very amusing. Yeah. Oh, thank you. But I'm really, I'm really excited that it's, it's like a year after, um, our first big film. That that's really cool. Was, yeah, I'm excited. Is it good? Because the other one was on Infowars, right? Oh yeah, and then we also released. Um, the trailer is on Band Video too. Ooh. On Infowars. Nice. On Info. Really remember, um, remember when you hosted uh Owen show dude one of the best days of my life they're like you have three hours I was like I'm gonna die <laughs> let me call everyone I know <laughs> everyone oh, I've ever so no it was like so much Texas. fun it was great it was and epic it felt like, it and felt like the kids were running the office that day it was like bring your kid to work day and then all the adults leave that's what it felt like it was fun it was so it was great. really fun yeah shout out to Rob yeah, Shout out to everybody at InfoWars. That was great. Um, all right, Lila, this was great. Thank you for going through this with me. Yeah. Uh, I wish, I hope Dave absolutely crushes it. I think Crowder is already crushing it. He doesn't need anybody to do anything. He's fucking made it. He's got all the monies. Oh, but look, here's the, here's, here's where you can buy tickets to our show next Thursday at The Space. Go to thespacelv.com. Click on my face. 
select your seats oh, look safely in the back away from our roasting eyes wow a lot of ticket sales home. yeah it's doing good it's doing good i hope this yeah. is a good venue i hope it's uh like conducive to comedy i hope it's a nice low ceiling oh, it's gonna be so fun i'm so happy keanu is gonna be with us too. too i fucking love keanu yeah Man, blast. it's gonna be good it's gonna be good we're gonna do maybe like a pool stream we're gonna be streaming like pretty often constantly doing content and uh, of course let's promote dave landau's shows <laughs> dave is mad because he's promoting his shows go see dave landau subscribe to dave landau follow him Follow my YouTube channel. Hit the like button. Hit the notification button. I never, I never ask this, but now I have to start asking it because I looked at my analytics and they're like, two people follow you. And I was like, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, Dave Landau on tour. Look at this. Look at all his fucking dates. Fuck yeah, Dave. Good for you. Look He's at this. He's doing awesome. Dude, he couldn't be busier. Oklahoma City, Cayuga Falls, Ohio. Tacoma, Washington. I've never been there. Uh, what having yeah. an agent can do. This is, I'm almost, all right, get it away. I'm jealous. Uh, he's going to be in Louisville, uh, Levity Live, Buffalo. Maybe open for him. And, Maybe uh, I should open Levity for Live. him. Yeah. Levity Live. All Chrissy, right. We should go to Washington State. That's where I'm from. Ooh, I thought you were born in Hawaii. I was born in Hawaii. I lived there till I was seven. And then I grew up in Washington, Marysville, and I went to Washington State University. So we could go, we could perform on the Spokane side or the Seattle Ooh. side. I feel like children should be Spokane and not heard. Wait, never mind. I thought that. <laughs> oh, God. All right. My brain is dying. Follow Lila. Um, can't wait for the doc to come out. Deranged lunatic. Lila, I can hardly wait for the new documentary. Same Yay. Yay, this was fun. Thank you guys for watching with us. A very it'll be very interesting. I see you guys in the chat going, Crowder's not gonna respond. Crowder is going to be a martyr, or maybe, you know, you know, you, you, the truth is always a combination of two sides. So maybe he'll do a special appearance and be in one of the sketches. Yeah. Mr. Burns, what's more likely is what Crowder is what Crowder is a liar or this. Uh, together with Crowder recording Jeremy Boring, and the truth is obvious. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, is this just part of being a shrewd businessman who makes a lot of money? I don't know. I don't, I'm not there. Oh, until next time. Uh, I think we're going to do a member stream tomorrow night. So stay tuned for that. And then we've got Simcast on Sunday. Kelly Cadigan, Haley Kennington, Freely Ashley. And then if you want to jump on, Lila, of course you will. You're always welcome. Thank, um, you. thank you guys in the chat for your very good questions and comments. It always helps to go through this stuff with you guys. And uh, we'll see you next time.